Today, we are joined by a very special guest, your friend and mine, the one and only Jeff Grubb, who is now very well known for just being on the inside, knowing the, the stuff. So we're gonna ask him all the questions about the truth behind Nintendo rumors. People have questions about rumors, so we said, let's just cut to the chase and go right to this guy who's at the center of this whole rumors universe. That's so, true. as they say, please look forward to it. Please look forward to it, yes. We're very excited to talk to Jeff, and it's gonna be a great episode. Everything that we do here on this channel, including getting Jeff Grubb to come onto the show, is sponsored by our wonderful Patreon subscribers. People sometimes say, well, okay, if I sign up for your Patreon, what do I get? Um, we have something big and exciting in the works, which we are recording after this, yes. which is going to be exclusive to our Patreon subscribers. And that is a Zelda Tears of the Kingdom spoiler cast. Wow! Yes, I know. We are so pumped to do this. We have been getting so many people asking us to do spoiler casts for like big games. You and I have both played and, and finished mostly Tears of the Kingdom. And we're gonna like do a full discussion of all of the story elements and everything that in the game that really excited us, good and bad. And we're gonna answer the question, which I know you're scared about, which is, is Tears of the Kingdom better than Breath of the Wild? Which is a, a question you seem to struggle well, first with. Of all, first of all, I'm not scared. I just didn't know for a while. But yes, I will be answering that question. Uh, nothing is off the table. Uh, we'll right. be talking about in-depth everything. So that means it's just like a normal podcast for you. Very different for me, though. <laughs> um, I won't be... I won't be... Um, caveat my discussion with a spoiler warning because everything is a spoiler. Right. So, so that will be coming out... Uh, Let's just say days from when this podcast releases. Oh, yeah. We haven't nailed down an exact date. So that'll be available to our Patreon subscribers at the first and up levels. But also, Patreon has this great shop feature, which they just launched, where if you're not subscribed, you can still get stuff a la carte. Yes. So this will be available through the Patreon shop. Look for that on the desktop version of mm -hmm. Patreon only yep. at the moment. Yes. More to come. Thank you, Patreon. Yes. Um, but yes, we're very excited about that and uh, always glad to deliver more to our Patreon subscribers. Exactly. We want to do more for them because they do so much for us. Exactly. And, uh, we love them a lot. Yes. So that's what we're doing and it's going to be great. Um, other stuff that's exciting that's on the channel is... Available to everybody on our YouTube channel. That's right. Available yes. to everybody. Although our Patreon subscribers did get early access to this. Mm -hmm. um, and they've been enjoying it over the weekend. But um, we have a really fun episode of Super Kitten Krista 64 where we recreated food from Super Nintendo World. Chef Toad, our I'm patron joined, saint. I'm joined by Chef Toad. Yes. Um, this was wonderful. We had people saying, oh, gosh, it's been about a year since you did the Splatoon cooking video. We're itching, we're jonesing for another cooking video. I we, couldn't wait to touch. We were glad to and deliver. And fondle another octopus. Just kidding, there was no octopus um, in this video. <laughs> no octopus. No. Says no. We're this, in, this, this is included. not a competition, first of all, no. which was good news for you because you tend to lose those. Um, Yikes. <laughs> but we had a great time and, you know, we, we kind of backdoored ourselves into this positive message. Uh, normally there's not always a positive message with these oh, things really? in terms of us just bap, 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 bap at each other. No, um, there's but again, always a positive I message. I will say this again. People are having a hard time getting in to the Toad Cafe at the actual theme park. Yeah. We are here to say now that we've done it, you can do this at home. Yeah. If you don't want to deal with that mess, just don't do it. Summertime is so busy at a theme park like Super Nintendo World. The theme park is rather small as well. And some of the food that we recreated uh, in this episode is only available in the Japan location. Right. So if you can't afford a ticket to Japan, can't get into the Toadstool Cafe, not to worry, we got you covered. You can easily, with a few um, little things to prepare, make these dishes at home and they actually taste really good. Yes. So. We're excited about um, that. He has a great scene of me contemplating theft at a grocery store. True. I had to stop you Did from I go committing, through with committing that? Did I go through with that or not? Crime? Oh, no. I don't know why that was my responsibility, but it was. I did not want to be the one that has to bail you out of prison. So there was that. Um, yeah. It was As the saying fun. goes, I could be your angle or I could be your devil. <laughs> misspelling, in, misspelling intentional. Angle? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but this, it's misspelled for a reason. An angle? <laughs> just, no, just on that part. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, anyways. Um, available, watch it now. Yes. 
So this, um, we have to say it's up. This is kind of a good news, bad news uh, installment <laughs> of the Kit and Krista podcast for a number of reasons. Okay. Yeah, we'll go, so we'll go through a number. Um, so let's, let's go, do let's bad go through, news first. Well, let's do the big one first. No, no the, good, the good news is we have Jeff Grubb oh, with news. us to yes. do this wonderful segment, which we recorded in advance. Yes. There is a small bad news component to that as well. Yes. I, I will raise my hand and take full responsibility. I was in charge of recording through our little remote recording thing that we use. I made a big boo-boo where I forgot to change the settings to video and audio. So we got Jeff Grubb, but we got him just audio. So you're watching a video podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, obviously if you're listening on audio, you're not going to be affected by this. But I did my best to put in like a lot of graphics and a lot of videos. Jeff and in a, a Batman of, costume. A lot of, yes, a lot of photos <laughs> of Jeff Grubb. Maybe he's holding a handful of hot dogs. Maybe he's in a Batman costume. Who knows? Um, but I tried my best to make it still look interesting for you. So hopefully you'll forgive me. Um, the, the conversation is still so good and so interesting. And it was really great to just hear from Jeff, like what that side looks like since we've been on the other side inside of Nintendo. Um, People so, want to look at Jeff Grubb. I want to look at the, Jeff Grubb. Is the takeaway. We got I, to look at I Jeff Grubb. I got to look at did. Jeff Grubb. Yes. He's handsome and wonderful. Can confirm. He's very handsome. Very handsome. Um, more good news, bad news. Um, I don't want to give it away fully, but we have another great guest booked and confirmed for next week. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, I was like, where are you going with this? And... <laughs> If, let's just say if you are a longtime fan of Nintendo Minute, you won't want to miss this episode wanna, next week. You, we're telling, we're calling this episode a. No, I'm just gonna don't say go too far now. I won't. I just had that thing about the spoilers. Look at ow! I'm calling this. We're calling this episode a tell all. And uh, there's only one person that would be available to to tell all. So. All right. Yeah. So you don't want to miss it. It's Doug be, Bowser. We'll it, see you in a week. It's gonna be juicy. It's gonna be juicy, people. <laughs> People are going to get exposed. You, sir, should be worried about that. Potentially uh, the bad exposed. news half of that is I'm wearing the Sonic the Hedgehog shirt. You were, you were, um, <laughs> I was shocked. You were contemplating why? I don't. Maybe it's laundry day for me. Maybe I'm is just. It? Maybe I'm just looking to zag and keep people on their toes. I don't know. I was really. Well, I opened the that. door to let you in, and you, there you were in your Sonic regalia, and yeah. I was like, huh? I was really, <laughs> I was really confused. I was like, who? Are, wait, who are you? You kid. Yeah. Uh, anyway, maybe, maybe you're turning around. I don't know. Yeah. All right. All right. So um, I think, is, is there, do you have any more bad news you want to share? You want to no. get, get it? You got some more secrets you want to get out there? No, I don't no. have any more bad news. No. All I have right, to great. own up to my, my mistakes, though, is All right. what it is. Well, we are moments away from our great conversation with Jeff Grubb. But first, we got to shout out our sponsor. This episode is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Uh, did you know Netflix has different content available to its viewers Around the world, right? That right. depending on where you are, you cannot see without ExpressVPN. That's right. It has tons of stuff that you can't see. You're only really seeing a very tiny fraction of all the great entertainment across Netflix. But if you use ExpressVPN, you can VPN in from any other region. I do it so I can watch K drama and eat ice cream. Okay? Even before we were sponsored by ExpressVPN, you said, I do this when I travel. I do this when I travel, and I do this when I don't travel. When I travel, I want to watch like all the shows on HBO and stuff like you that. Don't wanna not you don't want to miss the shows you are currently watching. Exactly. I want to get spoiled either. Yeah, you yeah. know, that's dangerous. Um, and then also, now you know that I'm, I'm here in the US, I want to watch. Korean drama and cry. So ExpressVPN has yes. got me covered. It is compatible with all your devices, phones, laptops, even smart TVs. And it encrypts all your data so you know that what you're doing out there is very safe. Very safe. So be smart, stop paying full price for streaming services and only getting access to a fraction of their content. Get your money's worth at expressvpn.com slash Kit and Krista. Don't forget to use our link at expressvpn.com slash Kit and Krista to get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. We'll put the link right over here and also in the description below. All right. Okay. Now, without further ado, Mr. Jeff Grubb. Today we have a really special guest with us, Jeff Grubb, the one and only. Thank you so much for being with us Welcome. today. Welcome. Thanks for having me. I'm, I really appreciate it. This is fun. Our fans are always so interested in the world of video game rumors. We thought, well, let's get the guy who knows the most <laughs> about that to talk about it a little bit. But you know, I was I was getting ready for this, and I was trying to think back of when did we 
meet for the first time or you know paths cross in the industry and and it's one of those things where I legitimately didn't know do you know i I don't remember it's it's been it was like a couple of times. But it's uh, n- nothing that was like, oh, well, obviously that was it. It's just like one of those things like I definitely have seen both of you at events before. And then yeah. uh, there were definitely kind of times where it's like we interacted. But it's like, yeah, I don't, I can't place it. Like, I, I saw you guys at Summer Games Fest, but Summer Games Fest for people who, who, who aren't aware, it was every five feet. Frenetic. It is someone that you yeah. get. So I'm like, I'll get to see, I'll talk to them here very soon. And then, of course, that doesn't happen because <laughs> it's like, oh, someone else came up and said hi. Someone else came up and said hi. So. There was a lot of that, but uh, I'm, I'm glad we can make this happen at the very least. Yeah, it feels like we've always known you, but then I can't pinpoint when our first interaction was. So it's, it's yeah, kind of like the video game industry is very feelings. small, right? So it's like yeah. everybody, everyone's sort of sort of sort of aware of one another. Uh, totally. And so yeah, that it's just like at a certain point, you just it becomes part of that glob. Everyone's yeah. just in the the, gl- just the in globe it. of video game people. So yeah, <laughs> totally, I, I know what you totally. mean. I know that at Nintendo your name started to come up a lot more around the summer of 2020 mm-hmm. when we Sounds were right. into the pandemic and we were starting to do announcements a little bit differently. And a conversation came up with like, Hey, this guy, Jeff Grubbs pretty right on with a lot of the stuff he's putting out there. What's going on with that? Yeah, yeah. that was, that, that, that was the year where it was like that, that stuff really started happening. It was, um, that direct and that, that March I think is mm-hmm. uh, one. And that, that was a funk. So that it didn't get announced early. And so I was, I was saying it was going to happen, and it was turned out to be a mini direct, so it wasn't going to get announced. But uh, it was like, well, maybe it's not going to happen. Maybe I'm going to look like I have a lot of egg on my face. And of course, the morning happened. That mini direct happened. It was very vindicating. But uh, yeah, and then and then things started. You're right. Throughout the pandemic, things started changing, and it was difficult to get through that signal and noise, or to find the signal inside the noise of like what are one of the, which one of these rumors is actually happening and which one are true and provide people some insight about, Hey, things are, you know, Nintendo's going to do things a little bit differently. You should prepare for that and not get up your, your hopes up in the way you usually do for, you know, with Nintendo fans, it's like they did it this way in the past. They're going to do it this way for sure. Again, in the future. And it's not always the case. And so it's like, just, you know, step back. Let's let, like, let them see how they're going to do things differently. And things did change a little bit, especially that year and a couple of years since. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll get to all the rumor stuff in a bit, but I wanted to start just by asking, like, what what is your personal story of getting to where you are today? It's always so fascinating to hear about the people's individual stories of the hardships or the interesting starts that they had. Yeah, it's um, it's it's definitely a unique story, which I don't think is uh, actually all that unique because everyone has their own way into the industry. There, you know, people ask, how do you get in? And like. I, I, my, I, I don't think any of the things that I went through is going to be all that useful to, to most people. The, the thing I usually say is find people who are going in the same direction as you are and work with them. And that yeah. took me a long time to learn that lesson myself. Um, I was just a fan of games and a fan of games media for a very long time. I grew up reading video game magazines. I was very much into game players and EGM. And I just remember thinking, I want to be among the people who do this sort of thing. I think they're very cool. The the voice that they've established for their publications is something that I'm interested in in how they accomplish that and uh, making it feel fun and making it feel like there is a community, even though it's just the page and the written word. And um, that really attracted me. And when uh, I think one up.com started, I started my own blog and I started writing about games on there and just kind of was I made friends. I made friends with a lot of people who are now in the industry, a uh, cat uh, over at IGN, a uh, cat Bailey. She was yeah. on there at the same time. Whenever I see her, I'm like, Hey, one up. Absolutely. And she feels the same way. Um, and it's, uh, I kind of went from there and when a one up started to collapse around the time of 2008 and the, the financial crisis and all these magazines were closing, uh, a bunch of people who I made friends with, we said, we should just go do our own thing, start a blog. We started that blog, did that for a while, started a podcast. It was nothing. I, I ended up writing for another site called combo.com, which is like, I always say it's like Kotaku. And then there was joystick and joystick isn't a thing anymore. And then like, you know, 50 layers of nothing and then combo. And they were paying me pennies for each story or whatever. Um, but it was fun. It was like experience. And at a certain point, it's like, okay, I'm, I'm, I've been trying this for a while and I'm getting pretty, I was getting older. I was, you know, I never went to school. I just was like, I'm working odd jobs and that's my real day job. Uh, and I kind of had a uh, uh, fizzled out. I'm like, I, it's probably not going to happen. Probably not going to be able to do this for a living. And of course not. Like that's, it was always kind of a, a dream and a buddy I, I, I made friends with through one up and all, all this stuff. Uh, he's like, hey, do you want to come volunteer on Bitmob, which was Dan Shu's site that he started after leaving one up and all that stuff? 
And I like, yeah, of course I'll, I'll do that. I'll, he's like, just write a couple of news stories each week, just kind of keep content up on the site. And from there, I kind of like got mentorship, uh, which was the big thing. Uh, the people who had written those magazines that I read growing up were now editing me and I was volunteering. I wasn't getting paid, but the, the, I, like that mentorship was actually invaluable of having someone actually take time to try to teach you the proper way to think about writing stories about video games, the proper way to think about the audience. The lessons I learned then uh, are, are still the guiding light for me to this day where uh, don't write for other people. Like other writers, don't write for uh, yourself, even write for your audience and sort of everything else will work out. And uh, that's every time I've like sort of reset myself and thought about that, it, things have tended to, to work out. But then, yeah, I went to Games Beat with, with Dan Shu when he left uh, Bitmob. And uh, from there, it's kind of been uh, where I'm at now. It's, it's like just figuring out how to write about games and then a, a couple lucky breaks, right place at the right time, make a couple of contacts, again, right place, right time. And it, it's been it's been fun. It's been it's been interesting to figure out how to like cover games as things keep changing. It is nuts to me how fifteen years later, I guess, the influence of One Up continues to endure. Yeah. I mean, I think for me, like One Up Yours was the first podcast, like period. I think I listened to same. Um, I love the One Up Show, and I know Krista and I sort of brought tried to bring some of that spirit Definitely. when we did Nintendo Minute, but mm -hmm. there's still like yeah. all these people who are like, oh yeah, that totally gave me inspiration or like those blogs that you talked about. Like a lot of people seem to have used that as a springboard. It's amazing to me because they're 15 years ago. Yep. It, it's, yeah. uh, it's, it's amazing how influential it really was. It was, it, and really it, it comes back to the video game industry being pretty small. So it turns out if you were making friends with a person, uh, that stuff can pay off in the future. If you are a, a human being and you're kind and, and you uh, support other people, it usually pays dividends in the end. I was just going to say that too. It's like, it, it's kind of going back to what we were talking about with Summer Game Fest. It's like the industry is so small. It really has like a different feeling than I think other any other industry that's out there. It's just got this real like friendship, you know, kind of family vibe to it. We felt that even internally at Nintendo, you know, so on both sides of the coin, whether you're a journalist or part of the community or part of um, a big publisher, it just feels like this weird, like family dynamic for better or for worse. But you're so right. It's like those relationships that you're building, um, they do really pay off. You know, when we left Nintendo, it was really, really scary. But we had so many people um, that we had relationships with and friendships with that really supported us along the way. And I think to your point, you know, those are the people that become sort of your guiding light as you, you know, make, make your way through through this wacky journey we call life or whatever it is. But um, <laughs> yeah, it really um, is something I think that's really special to the the games industry. Yeah, I, I think it's um, it, it, people can. I remember there was uh, some guy I used to listen to. I can't remember his name right now, but he would like say he was a YouTuber. And he'd be like, you know, I'm in competition with all these other people. If they go out of business, I don't care. And I was always like gently reminding him, you know, the more people that care about games, the more people that are interested in uh, uh, in games, and then find someone who talks about games in a way that they respond to, the better for everybody because. Mm -hmm. That's more people who are interested in overall, and that grows the overall audience. Even if they never end up like consuming any of my stuff, th there's a chance they might, and, and that like it all builds on top of one another. So we're not, no one's really in competition with one another. And this is like old news. We all we all know this now. We, we collaborate all the time because it is there. Um, there's no downside. It is all beneficial. Like we just build each other up. And so, but like when that clicked into place, and that was something that has clicked into place pretty hard in the last ten years. You, you know, you could talk to people from. IGN and GameSpot from the, the days in the 2000s. And they'll be like, no, we were definitely trying to compete with one, one another. We were trying to beat one another. And these days that that sentiment is like nowhere. No one talks that way anymore. And it's because we had this really realization that really the competition is not going to get us anywhere. Working together, getting more people excited about games actually is the a good end goal because it helps everyone. The exception to that, of course, is Greg Miller for obvious oh, reasons. Oh, he must be but anyways, Yes, <laughs> must be, uh, someone must do something about him. I completely agree. So, so you had this this twisty, turny path to get to where you are now. I, I really want to know, how. so how did you become, like, the rumor guy? Because that is not for everybody. No. <laughs> it's, uh, it is, uh, you, you talk to other people who've, like, done similar stuff in the past. Well, it it just requires, like, a certain amount of, you know, constant ear to the ground, obviously really great mm -hmm. sourcing through kind of precarious means at times. Yes. It, it's not work that everybody wants to do. Yeah, it's, um, it upsets my tummy sometimes. It's <laughs> like where I'm like, I'll say something. And I'm like, why did I say that? Like, uh, you know, even if I know it's, it's well sourced and I, and I have like all the, you know, the paper trail and I have uh, the evidence before me, 
things change. I mean, th- things have changed on stuff I've reported in the past. And it's like all it does is get people disappointed. I, and that's where it's like I, I try to uh, justify it usually as – when I bring these things up, oh yes, a lot of times it is it's it's fun. Let's talk about games. Every, you know, it's video games. It's um it's art and software, and the software part of that means that we're always looking forward because the technology is going to improve, and we all want to get excited about that. And I'm I'm the same as everybody else on on that stuff. But uh, for a lot of the rumors that that we bring up, uh, I, I try to find a way to be like, okay, how can we use this to help people understand the way video game business works and how decisions get made and why something is happening and why other things aren't happening. And I, I, that's, it's like, you know, we have these two sides of like people who play games, people who make games, and they don't always really understand one another and they don't have a direct line of communication and you can get people's attention with rumors. And then for that minute, you have like maybe uh, not everybody. And as this, this typically happens where I'll, I'll say something and a lot of people just consume it through uh, uh, re- people repeating it in all, other places, so, you know, YouTube and Twitter. But the people that have come to me, I'm like, okay, I have your attention. Let's explain why, you know, EA is doing this one thing, why they're remaking Dead Space. Well, they saw what happened with Resident Evil and they, they know that single player games and these legacy properties can build this backbone of the company. And like, here's this and that. And it's, I, I find that fun. I, I think it's a, a job that, uh, you know, a lot of people weren't doing. And so it, it, having the rumors is the definitely the fuel to that fire. Uh, but it's, uh, it's, you know, it has to be something more or else it what, what, what will happen is what happens with a lot of people who get in the rumor game. And it is, you get burnt out because it, you get one thing wrong or, or people, uh, or people get mad at you. You're spoiling game announcements and all that stuff. And it's, uh, it can be kind of harrowing after a long time for sure. How do you keep, you know, sort of that pressure at bay and, uh, what is your like, keep calm, routine because it, it, I feel like it, it's it could be pretty challenging to deal with that kind of sentiment every day from your audience yeah it's um you, I think I've learned not to repeat everything that's for sure mm. uh and it, this has a, a been a learning process for me I'm, I'm not like uh there is no natural gift for this stuff it is just kind of learning blindly as I go along feeling my way through it uh but I, I think the the real thing is to um, you know be sure before you say things or, or, and and try to be as clear as possible uh, and give people the information and, and don't and and don't do the wink and the nod. Um, the wink and the nod is something that is so dangerous. You'd be like, oh well, I've heard this and maybe this is going to happen and wink, wink. And it's like no, no. Here's exactly what I've heard and here is. Uh, and here's what I'm going to give you. And, I, and now you know as much as I do. Uh, and then if people want to speculate beyond that, well, I can't I can't help you there. You're doing this to yourself now. Um, it still can be a bit stressful for sure at times. Uh, but uh, I, that at those at those moments, uh, that is when you unplug from social media. Uh, just go yeah. talk. I got, you know, wife and kids and other hobbies. I'll just go. They, they don't care about any of this stuff. And that's real nice. I can just go unplug fully and engage with people who are sane human beings and just relax <laughs> yeah. that way. That's yeah, good. there's there's a handful of of journalists, yourself included, that we talk about on the podcast of, you know, when this person says something, we really listen to that. And, you know, the things that you say, you know, really inform a lot of what we talk about, because coming from a place like Nintendo, we understand like the rigor of the process that you have to have before you open your mouth once. Like, it, can you just talk a little bit more about like, what your process might be yeah. versus some of the other people who are talking about rumors out there, because I, I really do want to emphasize, like it's a different, it's like a different world. Yes. Uh, and I think it's, um, it is a, a fun space, uh, but I, I do do it differently than I think a lot of other people. I, uh, I'm i not hanging out on like forums where they're discussing a lot of rumors most of the time. I'm not on family boards. I'm not, um, I'm not like collecting other things and then saying, okay, here is what other people are saying and and, here, and and presenting it to you. I think the people who do that, there's some who are very good. I think like Nate the Hate, he's very good at like going out and finding the, the these people who are saying things and like double checking them and and, and going like t- taking what he's heard and seeing if it's true according to people who he does have sources with. I'm like, I just talk to my sources and then I check with my other sources and see like, okay, who can confirm this? Does this sound right to you? That sort of thing. And I try to stay ab- above the rest because I'm not good at like oh, taking other people's stuff and, and being able to tell truth of, from uh, from fiction and stuff like that. So uh, the process is I, I will hear something and 
I will sit on it until we can start like really finding other ways to mark. Okay. This does seem like someone else is saying the same thing. Let's see. Okay. Now let me take this to the other source that I know 100% knows what they're talking about and see if they're willing to talk to me about this. And you know, that process isn't perfect as well. There are occasionally mistakes and that usually comes down to uh, things change. Uh, and, and sometimes it is just me you know, like stepping in it, but most of the time it is, pretty it's it's relatively bulletproof if i stick to the process and i do it the way that i uh, that i intend to do um but o- overall it just it comes down to you know there are people you can trust and uh th- and if you hear something you can usually bring it to them and they're willing usually to keep you from harming yourself by saying something that isn't true and if they and if i bring something to somebody and they know hey that's uh, that doesn't sound right. They'll, they'll give me a warning and say, hey, that doesn't, you know, you maybe be careful with that one. And that's usually enough. And I'll just sit back because I don't have to say any of these things at this point. Uh, I don't feel the need to, to chase every single rumor. And that's nice. That's been beneficial. Yeah, I think the process of getting above the, the just the general speculation where people that don't have you know, trusted sources are just feeding each other stuff. Yeah, the, the echo chamber. Yeah, the echo chamber stuff can be super just convoluted and confusing and end up with, you know, anything goes in those kinds of discussions, I think. And we know from, you know, internally, obviously, that the people that know the information internally at these companies is a very small group. And it's a very controlled, you know, line of, of communication and information disbursement within companies when they have big announcements, when they have big right. reveals. So, logically when you think about it like it, it it's just not gonna you know be a thing that just gets out to these kinds of discussion boards you know you have to have some sort of source some sort of um process and and, and a way to check you know potential facts so that's just you know from an internal standpoint like the people that know even within a company is so small um yeah it'd, it'd be pretty hard to to do it any other way and the the rumors when they when they um when they do start getting out and they are accurate uh, I find that these companies often change their procedures. Uh, it, yeah. It's, um, you know, for the last, you know, three or four years, I've had like Microsoft's full e- e- E3 thing. Here's the entire list. And I've stopped like sharing that because it's like everyone's going to get to see it. What What's the point of just sharing that? But it was like I had the full. And then this year, it's like, no, nothing because they compartmentalized and only mm-hmm. a few people really knew everything that was going to happen. It's like, OK, they've responded to the leaks and now they're they're implementing yeah. more secure methods. And that's exactly what you're talking Nintendo about. Nintendo yeah. went like leak crazy after 20 i mean i think it started even before 2020 but then it, it, it sure. went into like a beautiful mind like someone's in a room with like <laughs> whiteboards and like some crazy yeah it, it, it got to, to a place where it was just absolutely dominating every business decision and every you know everybody was like on edge all the time so i don't think that's good for the company either to like go to that extreme, you know, right. um, because it just, it doesn't, it's okay. Like, let's all take a deep breath. It's going to be fine. Um, but yeah, that, that was to your point of like companies are very serious about, you know, wanting to maintain that element of surprise and wanting to maintain yeah. the element of control over how their announcements are shared and changing their processes and changing up how they do things. Like to your point, like, you know, that things change and they know that these, these leaks are, are um, something that they want to control. So yeah, that, that def- does ha- happen a lot, I'm sure. And and knowing the process that you have, even in the times where you do have a miss, there's probably still going to be some kernel of truth to it. So yeah. I remember, you know, you had to go out and make the Mia culpa about the Zelda games. And I, I felt bad yes. for you because I thought, you know, this is probably still going to happen. I think there was probably, like Krista was saying, some amount of layers around the timing that whoever your source is, wasn't privy to, but mm-hmm. it, 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 it all seemed to make a lot of sense. Yeah. It wasn't just coming out of thin air. And the, yeah, that's one where it's like, um, I have heard about Zelda, the twilight princess and wind waker HD for, for years, a two pack. And then that, but this is years and years ago, things change. So who knows what it's like mm-hmm. today? Who, uh, who, who knows? I definitely don't. Uh, but it, you know, I'd heard about that for a very long time. And then you get this other side of like, there's some Zelda stuff happening and, and then it's like, Oh, okay. This all matches up. And I, you know, we feel pretty comfortable saying this. And it was just a complete mistake. And, and, and at that, at the, in that moment, but you're right, there's definitely still some, tr- and this happens all, all the time. I, um, gotten a lot of, uh, trouble with the from software community talking about Elden Ring 
uh, uh, for a while, and it was like providing you know information that that I, I thought was true, and then it, it, when when everything actually happened in reality, not many of that li- many of that stuff lined up. And then I you know I talked to somebody recently, and they're like, yeah, I worked there at the time, and everything you were saying was true it was just out of date. It was just like we changed things a little bit. It's like okay, yeah, <laughs> of course that's what happened. That and that's how it goes. But that's you know I, I still that's still my responsibility. Like I don't um I don't try to push that off. I still let like, that's why I do things like I, I apologize when I get things wrong because it's. I, I do want to let people know I'm not going to just come there and be like, well, things change. And that's an excuse for every single thing. When I do say something, I'm going to try to make sure that this is the thing that's actually going to happen. Cause I know that's what most people hear when I say it, no matter how many caveats I, on, I add on top of things, what they hear is Jeff Grubb said, this is going to happen. And so if that's what they're hearing, I want to be as sure as possible. And sometimes it's like, it's a messy uh, things. This whole process is messy. I think it's messy on both sides of trying to track down the news and then actually trying to put out these games. Uh, there's got to be a million decisions that go into that. And so uh, I, I, that messiness requires a little bit of, of you know, of, of being a little bit careful on all this stuff. And I want to like take that seriously. Well, even internally, it's a mess too. Yep. So I that's why you call it the game mess. Yeah, that's exactly why you call it the game mess. That's what it is. Yeah, that's, yeah. And that's that name. It was like, you know, the name was playing on, on uh, Jeff Keeley's Game Fest at the, you know, whatever <laughs> Summer Game Fest at the time. But also it was like, it was saying, yeah, like, who, the companies don't know how to handle this. They're figuring this out on the fly. It Absolutely. is a mess. Like they, yeah. they had one way of doing things for a very long time. They have teams in place that know how to execute on this one thing for a very long time. And now they have to figure out a whole new way of doing things and no one knows what it's going to look like. So let's all just kind of figure it out together. And that's kind of where all that came from for sure. So I'm so curious about this sense of timing of knowing when is the right time to talk about something and, and using your most recent, um, sharing as an example that, uh, you know, on your podcasts recently about Zelda and Metroid, like, was that something you went, went into that knowing like, oh yeah, tonight I'm going to share this. Or did it just kind of hit you in the moment of like, yeah, let's do this. Let's have a bit of fun. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's one where it's like, that's been sitting uh, around for a little bit and it's um for, for a little bit. And then, you know, the show starts and I wasn't intending to bring that to the show necessarily. It was like, yeah, there was no news tonight. Like here's an opportunity. I can't like, racking my brain like why couldn't we talk about this it's like okay well, let's just frame it very clearly uh you know metro prime 2 remaster we've heard for a while that 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 was also in the works alongside metro prime 1 remaster that's a big boy remaster well you know all the all the terminology i try to use to let people set their expectations appropriately but it's like yeah you can still be excited about this it sounds like it's still coming and relatively soon i you know as far as i know that could mean you know months but you know look forward to it and then um and then something – this is – and then for the Zelda thing, it's like, you know, I, I feel comfortable saying this because I'm just going to say exactly what I was told because I wasn't told much. And then we can all have fun speculating on it, and who knows what it actually ends up looking like. But it's, it is, it is you know, something Zelda-related, not Tears of the Kingdom-related later this year. Now, everyone knows as much as I do. Let's try to – let's have fun figuring that out together. And sometimes what happens is when I, when I do something like that, that shakes other stuff loose, and then people come and say, hey – well, here, here, you know, maybe this is lining up with what, what you've heard. And then I could take that back and check on it. Uh, so it, it's there is no one right way of doing things. And a lot of times it does just happen in the moment where it's like, yeah, this is fun. We can bring it out there and kind of talk about this and create a little bit of news, kind of create some fun for people. It's a quiet time of year uh, for whatever reason. Uh, people are waiting to play Pikmin. And in the meantime, no one, everyone else is taking the summer off. So, yeah, we can figure out some stuff to talk about here. But uh it, at any one time, it's like, you know, just make sure, again, that clarity of language as as close to the truth as possible and as close to what I know to be true as possible and nothing extra on top of that. And that's usually going to be OK, no matter when you talk about it. That that point you made earlier about people being mad about annoyance, uh, announcements getting spoiled. I'm curious how you feel about that. And what the, do you ever take that into account when you're talking about stuff? Uh, yes, I, I take it into account in terms of. Uh, if a game developer comes up to me and they're like, I, I, I'm, upset you, I'm upset you spoiled our announcement, I say I feel bad because I do feel bad. But we go back to the thing I said even earlier about who do I write for and who do I do, the, who do, I do my work for? Who's my audience? It's the people who come to my show, the, the video gaming audience, the game players, people out there who are curious about that stuff. That's who I view as that's who I work for. That's who I need to actually, if they're mad at me, that's what matters. If game developers are mad at me, I, that's not my goal. That's not what I'm trying to do. And I do feel bad about it, but I, I, I can't even really apologize because it's just my job. That's what I view my job as. So 
it, it enters, it definitely enters my brain. I think about it. I'm not, like I said, I had the, you know, the Microsoft rundown for E3 last year and the year before that. And I didn't spoil this before they came out because I do, I'm like, you're going to see exactly what's happening here 100%. I, I don't think I'm adding anything. But if I feel like I can add something or if I can demystify something a little bit or if we have a conversation around it, usually it's going to be like, OK, yeah, I, I recognize that this is spoiling reality, but that's the job. Yeah, that, that was literally what I wanted to ask you next, which is like, what is the most awkward interaction you've had with somebody who is mad about this? Because, again, you're, you're not just some random anonymous anime avatar on Twitter. Like you are, <laughs> you are part of the industry and you see these people. Yeah, people are usually uh, very kind. Uh uh, and you find this, uh, this is what has made me like when people do criticize what I do, I'm like, well, well fair enough. Uh, like, my job is literally the, like at, the, at its most fundamental level, it is critic. Like we're criticizing the way these companies behave or we're crit criticizing the products they put out. And if so if someone wants to criticize me, uh, that's completely fair game, I think. And I, that came to me because like, you know, I've written reviews, bad reviews for games. And I talk to those developers and they are always so gracious about it. And they're like, we appreciate it. And you can tell they know more about what's wrong with the game than even I do. So uh, it, like those kinds of conversations have informed that when it comes to like the leaks and the rumors, uh, I've definitely had some people like, yeah, you, like this ruins what we try to do. And I, I'll, I'll explain them. I, I understand that. Uh, but it's, it's usually never awkward because I do understand where they're coming from. And I make it clear that I, I appreciate their point of view and, uh, I, and I'm, and it's not my goal, like I said. So people usually come by the end, they understand it. Uh, but uh, most of the time, the vast majority of the time when I talk to someone in that position, they're usually just laughing and they're like, man, it's like you caused some real fun stuff at the office a couple of days. And it's like, OK, yeah, it's again that I'm not really thinking about at the time. It's like, oh, there are people are going to go in the office and talk about Jeff Grubb said this. And that's never I never think about that. And so hearing that, that's usually pretty funny. That definitely happened at Nintendo. We talked about you a lot. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. You didn't <laughs> yes, get yeah, slapped never... by Doug, though. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like I would never even like think about it that way. It's like they don't even know who Jeff Grubb is. And yeah. so now apparently it's not. amazing, like when we have some of these internal meetings um with you know things around rumors or things around people that maybe have had said had said something critical about nintendo like there they would be like you know fairly long lengthy meetings with a lot of senior executives in there and i i always kind of chuckle to myself it's like if only that person was a fly on the wall here and yeah. see this room filled <laughs> look with look at what you've done <laughs> you know just filled with these really serious high up people like really like oh i'm upset about this and it's like you got to take a step back and and you have sort of an out of body moment you're like this is yep. video games you guys we're not like it's not like curing cancer or whatever like let's just chill out um but it was always funny to me that the resources internally that you know companies would would use just to to you know have these conversations about people I, I and think, leaks you know, and stuff like that and it's like it, i can uh, imagine those those meetings happening but from the outside it is almost always cooler heads prevailing where it's like by the time anything gets to me uh and it's just like business as usual here's your review code no matter what you've said yeah. uh you know you, you leaked our game two months ago here's a review code for that game because <laughs> it's just we're gonna keep it we're gonna keep chugging along and so yeah, oh, okay exactly. great I, I, this this works for me and again i'm gonna do you want to? I, I've definitely had those long conversations with companies getting very upset. I mean, um, uh, e EA's reached out a couple of times and was like, "Hey, can you please just like let, let's talk?" You're like, "You're you were causing <laughs> yes, you're causing stress on the team," and it's like, "Okay." I'm like, "All right, th that is a, a valuable insight. I appreciate because I'm not trying. Like, if it's causing headaches for the team, I'm going to re rethink about the way that we're doing this a little bit." Um, but for the most part, it's like if everything I say is, is upsetting the team, it's like you got to just tell the team I, I, to cool, doing my job. To chill yeah. out. Yeah, chill exactly. out. I, I, right. In the end of the day, you're right. I think this is the way I view it. It's video games. Um, I, I, and, and, you know, the, the, these human relationships are, are, are more important. So when people say that they are, are being stressed out, it does weigh on me. But it is, at the end of the day, just video games. Yeah, totally. So for, for people out there who do like to partake of the rumors, like – from your perspective, like what is the best lens to look at, again, these sort of anonymous accounts that pop up and share information? Because sometimes they are right, but you never totally know like the full background of it. And I think like I think it can be hard to to parse that. Yeah, I uh, I struggle with it myself. I uh, I'll look at these and I'll get like, oh, that sounds great. I'll get excited about that. And then it's like and sometimes it's true. Sometimes it's not. Uh, so I, I get burned about uh, on those just as much as anybody else. Uh, I would say. Uh, that that there are people who are good at 
sifting through that stuff for you. Uh, there are, you know, gaming leaks and rumors on Reddit, I think is, um, can they, they take that stuff pretty seriously and they can be, uh, it, you know, it's community source. So they'll have a, a bad habit of taking everything anyone says m- myself, for example, and be like, this is a rumor. I'm like, no, that uh, homie, I said that was speculation at the beginning and the middle and the end repeated. It was speculation. Please stop doing that. But then they, they get pretty good at like correcting that stuff, taking those things down. And they, uh, they're like self policing in a way that I think is mostly if, if what you're interested in, in, in is hearing news that hasn't been officially announced yet, a, a resource like that is pretty good. And then, yeah, I'll go say Nate the Hate again. He's He is uh, good at, at sifting that through that stuff for other people. He is good at checking on that stuff. And I, I, I trust him Like when I'm like trying to figure out what's going on here. I'll listen to his show and be like, okay, now I'm, now I feel like I'm, I'm much better understanding actually what, where the truth is on this stuff. Uh, and then that makes it easier to go back and, and, and do my job where I'm like, I'm, I am trying to stay out of that stuff mostly. And I'll, I'll try to just check my sources and stuff. But if you are trying to keep up with everything, um, you're gonna, there's going to be so much stuff that is going to be wrong and, or misrepresented. And the, the game of telephone is absolutely real. Some stuff will be true, and it will turn into a completely different thing by the time everybody's done uh, running it through the content grinder. That There is no one good way to make sure that you're fully apprised, that you have to just take that bad with the good and accept that because you are trying to get news early. Yeah. Do you see, like, a point where... Like you talk about like the personal toll that this takes, obviously like the risk of putting yourself out there for any individual thing. Like, do you see a point where just like, you know, I don't, I don't want to be in this world anymore. Like I want an easier life for myself and (laughs) just like are sick of it. Uh, yeah. I mean, I definitely, I've, I've seen that happen to colleagues. I've seen that happen to other people who've been in the, in the rumor space. They just completely remove themselves after a while because, uh, it is, what have you done for me lately? Uh, there are, People who have their one thing, and if that one thing wasn't exactly right, they will fixate on, and they'll remind you every time you talk about anything. Uh, and that stuff is uh, it's it's annoying, but that's also being online, and everyone deals with that sort of stuff in one form or the other. I don't think it's an excuse, but it's it's the reality. Um, but I, I think I've already sort of tried to uh, not, not branch out, but remind people that there's there's more to, to what I'm doing. You know, I work at Giant Bomb now, and we we, we you know today we're going to go play Four Swords Adventures. Uh, together online and and goof around in that game and there will be no rumors in that at all it'll just be us being a bunch of idiots and having fun with each other and that's the stuff we're doing during the week and uh, it's the stuff i like i i like making fun content as much as i like talking about any of this stuff i do like the the news side of the, is, is is definitely my, my bread and butter it is the thing that i feel um uh drives me the most because i am curious in, about how the industry works i'm curious about the human decisions that get made um but I definitely am like, hey, if I go a couple of months without breaking a story, I am not stressing anymore. And there's a time I definitely would have been like, what, it, like, what have I done for people lately? What is my value here? Do, are people going to care? Are they going to forget? And now it's like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to build an audience in a slightly different way or in a, in a parallel way. And then we'll, we'll, that way, you know, when I am ready to drop something, people are still paying attention because, you know, we got the daily news show. We got all this other stuff happening. So I'll have an avenue to talk about those things. Uh, but, but it's definitely cooled off where not, uh, there was a time where everything, every time I would say anything, every reply would be like, all right, what's happening with this? What's happening with that? And there are still people who do that. But now these days it's like people talking about the stuff we make. And that is maybe a little bit more fulfilling. You do seem to have um, a emerging talent with hosting where, you know, you did the giant bomb show at summer oh, game fest for days and days and days where you seem to have yeah. literally everybody at summer game fest, except us uh, on the show. Thanks a lot. <laughs> That's why I was like, um, I wish I would have talked to you guys. I was like, I was going to invite you and I never got over to you. So darn. Uh-huh, yes. Uh-huh. Next time for sure though. I mean, how, how do you get through? Because I mean, that's something I would never want to do like that many hours where you, you are sort of keeping on top of it all. Like, w- were you kind of dreading that? Uh, no, I, it, it was uh, definitely um, intimidating to a certain extent, uh, but I wasn't dreading it. I, like the idea of getting a lot of people into a room talking about video games and making it feel like, yeah, it, this, it was mo- like in the past, giant bomb would have the couch and it would be a, a good mix of people. And this was summer game fest and we didn't know what to expect. And we, like, I tried to get more developers on there, but, but they were unsure. And they, like a lot of them were just like, we're not coming this year. It's summer game fest. It's not E3. We don't have what, anything to show at summer game fest. So we're just not going to be there. So I had a lot of our, our friends from the industry on a lot of, uh, a lot of other journalists, a lot of other media personalities. And it felt like, we were doing this for us. Like we were having a place for people like us to come together. And there isn't a lot of those venues. So I was excited to like 
present that and be like, here, let's talk about our feelings about how, like where things are going and how people feel about their jobs and all this stuff. And, uh, it, you know, the nonstop nature of it was definitely, uh, harrowing, uh, like a hey, six hours straight, three nights in a row, basically. Um, but I, I you know, there's a lot of great people that I, I'm like, I would get done with one panel and be like, all right, we got like 10 minutes. So the next one starts I'm like, oh man, look at all these great names that are coming here. I can't wait to talk to them. And it kind of just gave me the energy to get through it kind of with, with little issue. And then I work with so many people that are great at coming up with great bits and keeping things fun and keeping me on my toes and, and looking down and see the, the miserable Greg Miller just sneak on set and steal a piece of cake and stuff like that and <laughs> kicking him out of here. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it's mostly fun. And I really enjoy that kind of thing. I, when I started at Giant Bomb, I, um, I mentioned like, hey, you know, it, it is my values. It's, it is something important to me that we do something like uh, the couch at Summer Game Fest again, because uh, I, I think that's super important. And the fact that they all provide like supported me in accomplishing that again means a ton to me. So, yeah, o- overall, I'm like, I couldn't be prouder and I couldn't be happier about the way that all went. I remember when we were at Nintendo, we would occasionally get approached to do the giant bomb show at E3. Yeah, I'm sure. And it, but it was always like so many caveats of like, well, we know that you guys don't, you don't usually do this thing and we can have you on with some really sick. They were like so many steps that were involved. And ultimately the answer was still, of course, a no. no. Yeah. Like, do you ever, does it still surprise you? Like you had Phil Spencer on and he was incredible. And it's like such a non-traditional interview format and venue like that part of my brain, the Nintendo brain is always like, wow, that's so cool that, you know, Phil Spencer can just go out there and hang out and be a normal person. Um, it, 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 this seems to be like one of the last few venues where, where that can happen. Yeah, it's um, but I mean, I, th- I think you you nailed it right with all, all those ca- caveats and going up the chain and getting everything approved. And if that if you have to do that, it kind of doesn't happen. So, you know how we got Phil Spencer on on there is I talked to Phil directly. <laughs> I just said. Hey Phil, can we make this happen? And every time we would run into a problem with uh, you know that that chain of command and getting everyone to approve something, and there was always something, it, I would just be like, "Hey Phil, can you help us out?" And he's like, "Yeah, no, I'll make sure it's going to happen. I'm going to be there." And it's like, okay, so he has to decide himself that he wants to do it, or else it never would have happened. Is how it feels, and uh, that's you know that's pretty rare. But we there, you know a, a lot of people I think are in the industry they have their teams for a reason, and I think it's smart. I think to insulate yourself uh, uh, from all of the possible the pulls on your time, the demands on your time, I completely appreciate that. I am very grateful that uh, Matt Booty and Phil Spencer made time for us, and that it only happened because they were they they insisted on doing it. Uh, and again, you just like that. I like it's it's so cool. But yes, it's it is this one of a kind format in that sort of space, right? We have all these super uh, polished presentations, uh, tons of money going into making sure that your eyeballs are scintillated every second of, a, of, 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 you know, a 45 minute stage show or whatever, or a direct. And, um, and then we're going like, okay, no, we're just going to bring people in a room and we're going to start talking and see what happens. And we're going to do that for six hours. And it turns out people have a, a strong appetite for that because they have feelings and those, those feelings aren't no, normally represented in, uh, a, a game trailer or a commercial that they're seeing. They want to hear real human beings talking about the real concerns. And uh, um, yeah, I think it's a, it's a good fit actually. And even though it doesn't feel like it should be, it actually does work out really well. I think that's the key is that people want to just hear from real people. You know, we, yes. when we were at Nintendo, we tried really hard to like bring the people behind this like monolithic company, you know, their personalities out a little bit. And uh that goes a long way, I think, with the community. They really, I think, they really recognize and, and really form, you know, stronger bonds when it's just real people having <laughs> normal conversation. Who would have thought that we'd like to have human connection, you know? But uh, yep, it's so yeah. it's been the thing I've been chasing like forever. Like I said, reading those magazines growing up, that's the ones I was attracted to. The ones that was like people put their personalities in there. Mm-hmm. They had you could tell they had relationships with one another, and when that when that shone through, it'd be like that is the human connection. I, I mean. Playing video games, I, I talked to, to Steven Spawn about this uh, from, from Able Gamers, and you know he's like, I, what do I, why do I play games? And I'm like, well, I, I don't know. He's like, going to escape? He's like, yeah, it's what everyone says. It's like, no, it's a social currency. I can talk, I can play a game, and I can talk to my friend about it, or we can play a game together. But even if it's a single player game, I'm still, I have this common experience that I could share with someone else, and the and it really doesn't. I don't cash that in until I have those conversations, and I'm like, yeah, that's 100 percent how I feel. Well, Jeff, you have the kitten Krista seal of approval. If people want to track you down on the internet, where can they find you? 
Uh, and, uh, likewise, you, you, you have the same for me. Uh, I am Jeff Grubb in most places. Jeff Grubb on Twitter and Blue Sky and all these other places. Boy, I, God, it's a, it's a mess. That's a mess now. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm on Twitch, but really, you can find me on, on Giant Bomb, uh, GiantBomb.com. Uh, we do uh, uh, Game Mess mornings, Mondays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays, and then we do the Bombcast on Tuesdays. Uh, and that's uh, uh, the Game Mess mornings is a daily news show, and it's just us catching up on what's happened, and it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy doing that. I've been doing it for more than a year now. And I, I wake up every day when, when I have a show and be like, man, I can't wait to talk about games again. So if that's a, the kind of energy you're looking for. I would really appreciate people tuning in. And uh, thank you guys for having me. This is this is fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. It was so cool to learn about all that you do. You're doing so much. And um, it's just fascinating to hear from you since we've been on the inside and we've lived the other side of, of that coin. And it's just amazing to hear you know can i ask you guys one quick question yeah uh, do, you, uh, do you guys do you guys know the name mike minotti yeah, yeah. It's okay okay uh, it, it, was he ever discussed a re- regarding cat shines and uh spoiling that in his re- in his review because oh. uh, that's what got us put into nintendo jail and we weren't allowed to get review copies after that yeah, i do more. remember that there yeah. was a broken embargo <laughs> yes it was yeah <laughs> but i think that that embargo was worded really con- it was a, a little bit confusing. Here's here's the truth. All embargoes are worded really confusing. No, but the Nintendo <laughs> ones are a special breed of that, confusing. That's true. That's true. I think uh, I may have worked on that embargo. So I'm really sorry to Mike Minotti if I... And now he's known for wearing a disgusting RoboCop costume. So congratulations yes, exactly. to Mike. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. We, that's, it all Serves paid off in the right, end. then. I'm not... Ding, I, ding. Yes, yeah, exactly right. Exactly. Yes. Awesome. Well, thanks again for being here with us. We loved having you. Hopefully we'll get on Giant Bomb at some point. You yes, know, 100%. We, we'll be waiting yes. with bated breath for our And if you guys ever want to like host Game Mess Mornings with me, let me know. I would love that, that sort of thing. That would be great. Yeah. So, uh, Open yeah, invite? absolutely. Yes, we're there. 100%. We're there. Awesome. Fantastic. Thank you. And we're back. You always surprise me when you do that. Every time, it's like, when is it coming? When is it coming? <laughs> well, it's when the interview ends, Krista. When it's back. When we come back. <laughs> okay. Um, well, that was a very interesting and enlightening conversation. Yes. I love it because, again, we were on the other side. When we were inside of Nintendo, Jeff was just kind of getting pretty well known a for... thorn in our sides. Not really. Not our specific sides, but the sides of some people. We were always pretty, like, even keel when it came to this kind of stuff. I think a lot of people had, like, panic full-on at Nintendo when it comes to rumors and stuff and leaks. Um, but, yeah, it was just so interesting to hear Jeff's perspective and how he approaches it. He really does have... Such a um, informed way of going about all of this stuff, and it is it's a tough job. We will have him back. Yes. Um, onto the games we are playing, which is quite a packed list this week. Oh boy, yeah. And um, I gotta say, we are juggling a lot of games right now. You I and feel I. Okay about it though. And they're the games we're going to go through today. There are a couple games that are under embargo that we will be talking about. I think next week we can talk about some more of those. Yeah. And it just keeps coming. It's, an av- it it's a game avalanche. It's an avalanche. I'm, I'm glad that we're not lacking for games because I think if I had mm. a choice, I definitely want it this way. The over, okay. you know, the over, um, overly exposed to a lot yeah. of games right now. Is it better than not having any than a dry spell? Um, but yeah, let's go through them. You have you have Pikmin Four. Yeah, as start your with, first start with your list. favorite game, Pikmin Four. Um, so we did stream this um, late last week, or basically immediately when it came out on the eShop. Um, I had a great time with it. I don't know if you did. But I have continued to play this. That That is a good sign for this game, where I have so many games to play, and it's like every night I sit down and like, well, what, what's it going to be? I've been going back to this game. Good. Um, that's and, great. And not feeling like I have to or anything. It's like, no, right. I, I really, really want, want to. I want yeah. to keep that's going That's good. That's really good. It. And I have continued to enjoy it. So... Um, it has been interesting to see some of the more Pikmin diehards out there get really deep into this game and analyze it and talk about what they like and don't like. Um, I'm obviously coming at from a much less experienced with the mm-hmm. series perspective. Right. I've played every Pikmin game. The only one I've finished is three. Um, so I do have a different perspective. And I've seen people saying, like, oh, it's a little bit on the easy side mm-hmm. or, you know, oh, I don't know if it I... It seemed hard to me when we were streaming and you were playing. I thought it was pretty challenging, but I so, guess the... Diehard fans might feel different. Well, so when we did that, so after we picked up where the demo left off, right? And I immediately went to like a brand there was a, new area. There was a new area available, but I still had a lot to do in that first area. I think the smart move would have been to close out or do a bit more in that first area because there's some other stuff that becomes available yeah. to, to doing that. So, like for example, now I have uh, the hated blue Pikmin. 
hated by Nintendo, you see,、uh, um, because I fully、OP. I fully、OP. explored OP. that first area. So now there's stuff I can do in the water that I couldn't I do before. Yeah, we, we had some problems in the water in the second right. area. Right, my、that. Ochi is a bit more powered up now. Oh, there's a lot more、Ochi. stuff I can do I with do Ochi. Ochi. So that would have been the smarter move.、Mm. I think that would have made that second area a bit. But we wanted to be like a little bit more adventurous for well, the yeah, I mean, stream. Well, yeah, people have never、fun. seen that, so yeah, that was yeah. A, that was absolutely that was、cool. the right、yeah. move for that. But、um, I'm really impressed with these levels that they have put together. That's the thing that I enjoy the most is is fully exploring these levels and finding all the different ways that the developers have put in for you to properly explore. Yeah. And get to different areas.、Mm-hmm. Because if you just press the the pause button and look at that map, you're like, well, this doesn't look that big. But again, you're just a tiny little guy. Right. Right. And right. it is really big. And like. Everywhere you go, when you go down a new path, like you find something new or something you couldn't get to before, so it's got a really good hook to it in that sense of finding your way around and exploring.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, I found the map. Found when I was watching you play during the stream, like I found the map and just the even like this. Two beginning areas to be quite overwhelming. It just seemed huge. It is very big. You're right. You are so teeny that like it. It was easy for me to get a bit disoriented because everything starts to look the same and you feel a little bit turned around because you're so little and everything. The scale, everything is so big.、Um, so yeah, I think that sense of like almost you know you want to be a little bit lost. You want to be a little bit blind to what's around the corner, and that sense of discovery is、um, something that's super fun in Pikmin games. And、uh, yeah, I think that they do a really good job in this one. I mean, just from the part that I I watched. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's one of those things where I I haven't felt like oh my whole progress in this game is blocked until I get past、mm. this thing. I'm still trying to get up my sparklium to unlock more areas. Right, right. But I still have a lot. Available to me now in the in these two areas still now I've, I've pretty much completed the first and I'm on to the second,、um, but I like for example so getting those blue Pikmin was something that was I think pretty optional at that point of the game and there was kind of a good puzzle with it where it's like gosh how do I get this、Can't, am I supposed to be getting this at this point and ultimately I did but it took a good amount of、um, you know thinking through it and even some some trial and error. So again, th- those levels are just really well done,、mm-hmm. and I-, I have seen some criticism of the underground stuff.、Oh, okay. I-, I like those so far, though. Those feel a bit more sort of obje- objective driven.、Mm-hmm. And you have、um, it optional too, right? You don't have to do it, right? Well, do you? There are there are several where you need to go underground to get to, 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 new, get to the next、area. exit mm, of,、oh, of the、um, overworld. I see,、okay. but. I've, I've been enjoying those, so you know. Again, I do have kind of a, a more casual perspective on yeah, Pikmin, but、sure. I like this one a lot. I think you know, for me, this is probably. It's not even probably. It's it's definitely my favorite so、um, far in the series. In the series, yeah.、Um, you know, we'll see how far I get. I've, I've heard this game's very long. Oh my! Like, I saw、really? some people saying this game's like thirty hours long,、Oof. which is a lot. Of, that's a lot of Pikmin. That's a lot of Pikmin. <laughs>、um, to a hundred percent, or just to get through like the main I, story. I just saw some people who reviewed the game said like, "Yeah, this is how long it took me when、Ooh. I when I played it for." Oh my for, gosh! For that's review, a, that's、so、incredible. I don't. I, think, I actually、that. don't think that's a hundred percent. I think that's just a normal、Yikes. playthrough. So、that's、significant.、Um, we'll see, but you know, like they. Also added all the upgrades that you can do in between the missions, which I really like, and kind of give you a good motivation to、yeah. go back. Of like, oh well, now I can do this, so let's right, let's right. go see what I can do now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good retroverse, all mesh ready in that way. Yeah, it's just nice. Yeah, exactly. How is your Dan Dory coming along? Oh, it's awful. <laughs>、um, I did. Find... You have not improved your Dan Doryness. So we did something in the stream. Where I had to Dan Dory up to a certain amount. Yeah, that was hard. But... I I did another thing where you were matched up with one of those like weird like possessed pigmen, like plant plant headed people. Yeah, and he said I'm gonna Dan Dory battle you, and the game went into a split screen. Oh my! Where it's basically they were replicating the like、game. another player. Right. I don't know why it had to go to split screen because I could, like it was a very small area. I could totally see him doing it. Uh, but that was kind of fun, and there were. Did you lose? No, I won.、Oh, I、good. mean, it was it was it was literally the first one in the game. Okay, one、so、star battle. So I don't know. You did <clears throat> one star that Dan Dory challenge very well. I did that just fine.、Uh, that was that was fairly challenging. But again, I think I may have been at the wrong point of the game to attempt that too or too too early on. 
So I don't know why that went into split Sorry, screen, but it was fun because you can kind of mess with the other, you can go onto their side and like yeah. take some of their stuff. I remember they, were, they had like a bingo battle kind of thing. Bill Trinan is obsessed with the Pikmin bingo <laughs> battle. I can't believe it's not in this because I'm sure he was in Mr. Miyamoto's ear. Like, I, need, I need the bingo, I need the bingo, I need the bingo. Mr. Miyamoto slapped him away so, and was like, guess no, what? we're going to Dan Dory. We're not going to have it now because you won't leave me alone about we're it. We're going to Dan Dory and yeah, that's sure. what it is. We're Dan Dory, <laughs> right. people. <laughs> 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 well, I'm really glad that you're enjoying it. Obviously, I'm not going to play any more of this game, but I think it's great that you are having fun still. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. Um, the, another game that I have been adding on to my gaming poo-poo platter is Viewfinder. It's so good. I love this game. I think this game is going to be in my top ten this year. Yeah, for sure. I have a really bold statement about this game, which is I think this is the most next gen game I have played in a very long time. Oh, interesting. Well, Just the concept well, of it or? Well, I don't know if I should say it because Tears of the Kingdom felt quite next gen with all the building. But yeah, you know, people can define. But there's a concept in this game that's super fresh and unique that I haven't really seen anything do since like say a portal. Yeah, I mean, Which people, felt very next gen. people can define next gen however they want. Like some people see it as like pure, just like graphics. graphics? Yeah. Um, but so basically the concept of this game is you find static images like a picture mm -hmm. and you basically place it into the world. You can decide where it goes and it becomes a fully 3D space. So like if I had a picture of this studio where we're recording and I put that. And then you can walk into it. It would studio. basically eat up like that volume of space in the world and then I could walk into a complete right. replica of that studio. Right, right. So you're traversing the world by picking up and eventually you'll get a camera as well. Right, I do, ha I do have that now. The camera mechanic is a game changer, obviously. Right. So then you have freedom to do that. To do that anyway. With anything, because for the first couple hours, it's like, well, you just find this one picture. One image, Because yeah. that's the thing you need to complete the puzzle. Um, so the game is starting to open up quite a bit. And every world has kind of a different like take look or, on it. Yeah. The second world has this thing where there are objects in the environment that have pieces of the image and you need to line them up so that they align. Mm, yeah. And then that That's becomes right. something in addition to the into. pictures that you yeah. find. So yeah. I appreciate that every, it's not just a one trick pony where it's like you're right. doing the one th thing the entire way through. Um, there's also this amazing thing that they do early on just to like, the, the first like 20 minutes of this game are such a flex. They're just like, look at this. Like you want to see, yeah. some, you want to see something cool? Watch yeah, this. Yeah, watch this. We could do a thing. Right. We we did a thing here. Right. There's a sequence where you pick up pictures that are all done in different art styles. I love that. Part. And you go through those ones that, that like, blew like, my mind. It's like a kid's drawing or like an impressionist painting, and yeah. you, you're literally like in those worlds. Right. Right. Which is like so medieval amazing. pencil art to right. watercolor to something else. Right. It's incredible. So, so the reason I say it's next gen is like I don't. There has to be some amount of pretty significant processing power of like just yeah. placing these things into you can the place world. It anywhere and doesn't break the game. No, like and, and you, like, you basically have the ability to like change the game environment right. in such a significant way, and the game remains like functional, right. which is amazing. And like it's like if you if you put it up, like the gravity will aff affect the things where yeah, they'll, they'll fall, fall out. out of it. They will fall out. So people were they were saying the de the devs were saying that they, people were speed running it. Yeah. By putting the pictures in like weird, at weird angles to get the you know the things that you need to fall out mm -hmm. and land right where you totally. need to. Totally. So you can do so much. You, you're you can be so you have such creativity in how you traverse this world. Yeah. It's really it really. This is game incredible. seems like a testing nightmare. I don't know how you would test a game like yeah. this where you have so many possibilities, but yeah. So you have you know again I, I'm sure it's taxing on the hardware to be able to just change the world like that. Yeah. But again, you have this new idea that I've not really seen any other game do. Um, so you combine those things together. It's like, yeah, this is really a fresh, like this is a game that I would show like your friend who doesn't play games. Totally. Like this, yeah. this game will like mess with your mind. You want to see something cool? Or Check like you out. show like, like an art museum, this game. Like yeah. you put this game in the MoMA and it would fit oh my in gosh. so well it, with it that. It really would actually. It would just feel like this incredible display of like human creativity right, you know right. which is yeah then that I, I think to me if we're looking at it from that lens it absolutely right. feels very next gen yeah so there is like kind of an overarching story to it but the game is done in these like pretty bite-sized puzzles which right. i like which i like because you can really get on a roll with those and like feel like you're in a groove the story like i kind of have a handle on it i think there's more to be revealed um 
there is kind of like an Assassin's creed twist. Yeah, like an animus type to, of thing to it. To what you are doing, right. which was interesting to get revealed because when we saw this game in preview, like they, they weren't really talking about that. So I'm curious to see if the if the story ends up being substantial or not, but I, I kind of don't care either. Yeah, because it's like the gameplay is so intriguing. The, the act that, of doing it yeah, is so exactly. good. I also don't want to, uh, like this game looks really nice. It does look nice. It's it's a bit understated, but it's super clean and like all this, like the, very crisp. the colors mm -hmm. and just kind of the vibe that it's able to uh, convey is really good. Yeah. So I strongly recommend this game. This game yes. is amazing. It is amazing. It's on a PS5 in. Why haven't you been playing this game? You have this game too. I've been playing it a little bit, but I I, I have definitely been prioritizing my console time to Final Fantasy. All so. right, well, let's move on to that then. Yeah, yeah. I have a dilemma um, with this game. I know you've been playing more of Viewfinder than you have of Final Fantasy, it seems, recently. But, um, yeah, I've been, you know, going right along with Final Fantasy. And I, I did over the weekend because I was, I was also trying to, like, do some game planning with all the games coming out and, and all that stuff. And I did, like, try to see where I was chapter-wise. And I'm pretty close to the end, honestly. So oh. I'm only, like, maybe about five chapters away the chapters aren't yeah. super long yeah. so i think i can wrap this game up in hmm. the next week and a half or so okay um but yeah i continue to really love this game it, again i was really scared that towards the middle people say this game falls apart and not fallen apart yet for me i'm still enjoying it quite a bit um i am enjoying one thing that i really like so far is the pacing of this game hmm. like usually you know these very narrative driven games i feel like can have um, moments where like it's like too much action or you're doing something for too long or it's like too much downtime. I do feel like this game does that part for me pretty well. Like I did do a very, very significant boss fight that took me like 30 minutes to beat the wow. boss. So it was quite the wow. feat. And that whole night that, my, you know, my, my whole night of gameplay that day was like just nonstop battling. like leading up to the boss and then doing the boss fight. And then the next night when I went back to this game was like the most like chill, just like go back to your hideaway and like have some of these conversations. And they, they put you on a few quests that really felt sort of like tea time in, in Fire Emblem games where you're getting to know some of the characters and you can, you get to choose like which character to take with you on your little like, you know, your little errand that you have to run. and. Um, and you know, you just basically have these like, nice heart to heart conversations with these people, and it just felt nice to have a little breather after this big like crazy boss battle. Um, so I really like that about about the game so far. Like I I found that they they do this a lot where you, it's like a big you know chunky gameplay battle sequence, and then you have like a little downtime. I think I'm getting into the next chunky battle sequence though, because some significant stuff happened in the story. Um, so I'm really looking forward to it, but I, I know where, where it falls apart. People said it was in the middle of the game. I'm, I think I'm in the middle or past it. it. Didn't seem to happen for me. So I don't know what the deal is, but I'm still really enjoying it. Yeah. I wonder if that may have been that second time skip. Maybe, oh. maybe people found that to be disorienting. We, we did talk oh. about how like getting reoriented with the story after that can be a bit of a handful. Yeah. So, I don't know, you're further ahead than I am. I think it's fine because you have the nice lady that can explain to you what was going on. Like the Game of Thrones yeah, lady. Yeah, That's like, it shows you the math and then like gives you the little, little right. overview. I do have to pay very close attention to those when the lady yeah. talks to me because I'm like, focus. I need to know A lot of arrows on, on yeah, a map. A lot of like arrows. There's a lot of like this region and that region and this person and that person. Slow down, lady. I don't mind it. Maybe, <laughs> I don't know. I'm a history major, so I really like this kind of like... Like this kind of nonsense, yeah, like yeah. this kind of very dry historical facts and figures. Mm -hmm. Like I, I quite like it. So I thought it was, I, I like it. I don't, I don't mind the time jumps. All there right. was, there was some really like heartfelt moments in the last little bit that I played. There were some humorous moments in the last little bit that I played. I like how the game doesn't take itself so seriously. There's a lot of characters that are kind of almost like comic relief, you know, and even though this game has a very serious storyline, there's moments where it's like very anime and the, the facial expressions of people. Like I literally was like laughing out loud at some of the the more like humorous parts yeah. of the game. So I don't know. I think it's pretty good. So just me. <laughs> don't make me regret asking you this. Have there been any other major characters getting offed 
in your latest couple sessions? No. No. Okay, say no more. Yeah. That was my, I, I my did, question. I did get, I'm a little worried about how this game is going to wrap up because there's so many characters that I have such a deep attachment yeah. to now and I just want them to be okay. I did look up. Torgal is going to be fine. You had to look that up? I looked that up before, like way in advance because I was, you know, what I would, always, what, would, what would you have done if the answer was no? I would have stopped playing. Oh, no. I looked up doesthedogdie.com, which is my favorite site, to make sure that doggies and, and animals are okay in games and movies. And Torgal is going to be just now, fine. <laughs> now, Torgal is fine, but in this game, you do fight a lot of random dogs, though. But they're, like, all messed up, so it's okay. Well, no, a lot of them are like, oh, they're just, like, the, the, the you know, war hound of the but opposing... they're messed up looking. They're, like, zombie hounds. I just think like game developers should like take like you know like in Tears of the Kingdom we if you can to, like, remove the wolf. if you can remove the spider like have a thing it's like oh you don't want to fight a dog just like okay. take that out I would, that's I mean, a good if they, option if they let for me people take it like out, yourself I would have taken it out yeah. but I don't I don't really like I'm so attached to Torgal that I'm I'm like good like he's just All right. he's enough for me. All right, I'm not totally sure I understand this perspective, best, but fine. Is the best. Like we have to do the game of the year like best companion again. Well, this year we really will. Torgal. Yeah. Ochi, Torgal, who there's else? A lot sure of, there's, there's a sure lot there's of plenty. great doggy companions. Yeah. Um, and just great companions yeah. in general. Yeah. So yeah. anyways, I'm going to finish this game. And I really like it. So there's that. <laughs> great. You, well, though, are, are, are asking yourself some well, questions here. So again, the games are continuing to pile up. And of all the games that are on the docket and are in the future, like this is one where it takes like the biggest chunks of time mm -hmm. to play. And I think I'm maybe like a little more than halfway through at this point. And I'm, I'm asking myself, like, have I pretty much seen and experienced gameplay wise what this game has to offer? And I, and I am really asking myself, like, should I watch, like, should I watch the rest of it on like a playthrough on YouTube? Like what you do with Xenoblade? To, right. To kind of like open up some of my other time to, you know, keep up playing some of this other stuff. I don't, I, I'm not sure I would be miss. I don't know if I would feel like I'm missing out that much. Some of those boss fights are pretty awesome, though. Yeah. I mean, you're not, you, you may not be learning, like, a whole new gameplay mechanic. Like, right. I wouldn't say, you know, I'm having that experience that I did with God of War last year, where, like, all of a sudden, you get, like, a whole nother weapon, and you yeah. do, like, a whole new thing. Right. I was really shocked by that, because that was a late game, mm -hmm. you know, past halfway point. I, I haven't experienced that type of surprise new gameplay element yet, but those battles are cool you know they're they're really flashy they're really fun um you you do continue to get new icons and stuff like that mm. and you can like kind of play around with how to do all you know how to map your character to do all that stuff so gameplay wise i would say that they keep it fresh with the icons and the boss battles are significant enough for you to want to experience that but if you really just want to play this game for the story like that would be fine too i think yeah you, you could definitely just the story is awesome. So if you want to just watch it like a movie, like that's. I'm, un I'm undecided. Uh, okay. I haven't made a decision. Mostly because I, I asked you this question about three times and you refused to answer. I didn't want to ask. So that's why I I'm asking you on the answer. podcast. You have to answer. I wanted to tell you in person, but I, also I just want you to think about it a little bit more. This I, was when I did this with Xenoblade. That was absolutely the right move. I think so because that gameplay did not change. And it seemed so, to maybe kind of taper like, off in of, terms of enjoyment. The, the last couple of chapters was a little bit of a slog. Yeah, TBH. yeah. So that was. Um, so you did. You, I, I highly encourage you to do that. Yeah, I said, with, play until the end of chapter five, and then you're good. Which right. I think was the right choice. Yeah, with certain games, you can do this without missing out on a lot. So mm. I'll, I'll keep thinking about this. Yeah. Because I, yeah. I have mixed. There feelings. is like a pretty significant boss battle that you do pretty soon. I would say at least do that. All right. It's only like maybe like two hours from where mm. you are. Do that, and then if you still feel like you had enough, like I'm good, right? Then I think maybe you can. Don't don't forget, we're supposed to be playing uh, Diablo for the month of August. I'm ready. Don't forget. I'll be done with this game. <laughs> don't look at me. I'm not, I don't have a challenging schedule like you do. I'm good. I don't have a life. I just sit at home and play video games all day. It's all right. Well, then let's go on to the next game you're playing. Yeah, I am playing a game that I saw um, during Summer Game Fest. At Disneyland, right. it's called Disney Illusion Island. It's a game that I am very excited about. Um, but yes, I started playing this game. I you seem to say that in a way to imply that I'm not. Oh, well, I, I haven't played to. it at all. I, I really want you to. I, I have no opinion. I always get like a little nervous with Disney games because you're such like a non. You know, you're you're like you're you're more Star Wars. I, I don't know. 
I'm like a noted Disney. You're just taking shots. A huge Disney fan. You are more of a Star Wars person. Right. So, anyways, um, but this is a game that's great for us. I, I I do think we're gonna play this game together. It's like a four player couch co op game. Mm -hmm. um, but you can play single player as well. I played single player um, over the weekend, and it's really really fun. I I think the best and most like sort of accurate comparison would be sort of like a Kirby game, oh. where it is platforming. Mm -hmm. But in the most like chill and relaxed way, mm. where they they give you a lot of abilities to kind of give you some leeway in, in how you traverse the world. You actually can't even like kill any enemies. There's no killing at all in the game. You just like avoid them, just jump over them. So what if they what if they knock into you? What happens? You lose a heart, but it, the respawn is like pretty forgiving. Can, as can well. you die? You don't really die. You just like port back to the last little like checkpoint. Okay. Yeah. There's no like game over or anything yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, We're done with game over. I am we don't so need, done we don't need with game, game over, over anymore. Yeah. yeah. The, the, Lives. Doesn't, doesn't add add to any value. It's not 1987. Exactly. Yeah. I agree. Um, it's really cute because you play as so there's four characters: Mickey, Minnie, Donald, and Goofy. Each one of them has sort of. Um, Similar uh, uh, abilities, but slightly different as well. Like I just learned to do the wall jump, and Minnie's wall jump is like she has a little like a little grappling hook, oh. and she grapples onto the wall. Yeah. But like Goofy's wall jump is like a different little element. And then there's also like a little like lawn jump that you do. Like Minnie um, makes a little paper airplane and sits on top of it, and that's how she does her lawn jump. Mm. But like Donald has like a rock, like a firecracker. Okay. Um, so they they do a really good job like making the characters match the power ups. Which is really fun. Um, the art style is really beautiful for this game as well. It's like really unique. Um, when we were previewing looks kind the of like game, old old timey. Exactly. Right? I was gonna say it has more of like an old timey kind of like classic Disney look. And when we previewed this game, um, we were at Disneyland, which was really cool. And they were like, "You guys should go to Toontown because the art style is very much like inspired by Toontown." And it, it totally they have a new ride that just captures this art style so well. You really feel like. There's like connectivity between you know Disneyland and the game, um, but yeah, I'm loving it so far. It's so cute. I'm playing as Minnie right now, but I want to try some of the other characters. I think you and I should play some co-op together, but it's really great. I yeah. really love it. Nice. You oh say okay. So we have to <laughs> explain this. So last week <laughs> you problems. were talking about how you were playing Dordone, but you had hit a game-ending bug. I did, and then I thought it was just me, so I. After we recorded the podcast, I gave you my switch, right. and I was like, can you just try? Maybe I'm just not hitting the button correctly. Right. But it, it wasn't me. But then, literally hours after we recorded that episode, they tweeted out that they had a patch ready for that very bug. It was amazing. I couldn't believe that. I couldn't believe it. So I updated my game immediately, and I finished our dome. Mm. Yay! I'm so glad, because I was really sad. I was definitely going to watch the ending on YouTube, because the game was so good. But I'm really glad that I was able to finish it yeah. on my own. The game was so good. This is such a great summer game. Like, two hours-ish, really short, but just a, a great story, and the most like mind-blowingly beautiful art style that I've ever seen. I like that they put more rain in this game towards the end, because the rain effects of this game is like next level, blow your mind amazing. Like I don't understand how they're doing it, but something about the combination of rain with a watercolor, mm. you know, art style, just like that bleed effect with the paint. Um, oh, it is so beautiful. But um, yeah, I, I thought that the ending was very, very good. I was like a little nervous that it was gonna be something like super dark. <laughs> If they do kind of build up this mystery. They do. Where you, your mind can kind of run wild. My like, mind what, really What could did. have happened here? I was like, what happened? Because there, there's a lot of family drama, you yeah. know, with the, with what is happening here. You get, you're getting these text messages from your dad that's like very upset with you about going to your grandmother's house and all that stuff. So like, I'm wondering what this family drama is, but I'm glad it wasn't as dark. Mm -hmm. I mean, this game is, is should be, you know, light and, and fun and... Um, it generally is that, and but uh, yeah, I was glad I was able to finish it. So yeah, yeah. Well, the games will continue next week. But that's <laughs> what we're playing now. Uh, it is almost time for the news. Before we get to that, I got to shout out our sponsor, Factor. Thank you, Factor. 
Now that we're in the thick of summer, you might be looking for wholesome, convenient meals to support sunny, active days. Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit can help you fuel up fast with flavorful and nutritious ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time, eat well, and stay on track reaching your goals. Oh man, Factor saved me last week. Me too! We had the world's busiest week. We really did. We really had a packed week. I had no time to cook anything, so I relied heavily on my Factor meals. Never frozen, two minutes in the microwave, and it was basically, I had it every day for lunch for that entire week. Yeah, we were super busy, and it was also like, it's really nice weather here too, so you just kind of get the feeling, you're like, you're a little bit lazy, you're like, eh, uh, I don't yeah. want to. So this was like That's the perfect true. for that, because it was like, yeah, eh, it's about time to eat. Oh, here we go. Fast, good, yeah. easy, yes, I love it. And they have really good options. Like the, the all the dishes are really delicious. There's over 34 weekly restaurant quality options. Right now they do have a lot of summer recipes. So if you are craving like, you know, stuff on the grill or, or really delicious kind of um, vegetables, summer veggies, like that is what's on the menu right now. That's right. Wonderful. You can got keto, calorie smart, vegan, uh, protein plus, no matter what kind of diet you are on, Factor has you covered. Yeah. So this July, get Factor and enjoy eating well without the hassle. Simply choose your meals and enjoy fresh, flavor-packed meals delivered to your door. Ready in just two minutes, no prep, no mask. Head to factormeals.com slash kitandkrista50 and use code kitandkrista50 to get 50% off. That's code kitandkrista50 at factormeals.com slash kitandkrista50 to get 50% off. It's a lot of percent 50, off. 50, 50, 50. 50. 50. The fitty. link for the fitty is here yeah. and in the description below. All right, news time. All right. You insisted we add this in. Well, I wanted to talk about it. Well, this it. is firmly in the rumor. I should ask Jeff Grubb about this. I know we should. This is, this is in the rumor zone. <laughs> yes. So there are rumors about a new version of the PlayStation 5, PS5 Pro, uh, that is presumably, according to this rumor, coming out November 2024. Uh, so that's a bit of a ways out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but it would offer up to 8K. Whew resolution and would basically be able to maintain uh you know 60 frames per second at 4k as well that's crazy thoughts on this i mean i think we were when we were doing playstation predictions for that big beefy showcase that they did we were talking about what we think would be the next hardware thing for them we had thought ps5 slim was on the table but I don't know. I, I think this, there's some validity to this. You know, they're probably thinking about next year, you know, with what is Xbox doing, Nintendo's likely going to have their new system next year. So to remain competitive, they're probably thinking ahead to what they should be doing as well. And of course, they're going to win on one thing alone, which is power. So I think there's some validity here. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it being 2024, which is over a year away, that's, I think the... PS5 came out in 2020, so that's four years in. Yeah. Um, right now, though, I would say, like, I don't I don't know why we need this now, mm -hmm. because we're even now just barely seeing games that fully take advantage of the PS5, and we just got out of games being cross-platform, PS4 right. and PS5, starting, you know, starting with Spider-Man, we're, we're starting to get further away from that. There are some games that, that can't do 4K60 now, um, but I wouldn't say like, oh, we're really butting up against the limits of this um, hardware. And then when you get into the 8K stuff, it's like, well, who can see this? Or who, there, is who there is TVs the, that are? Yeah, who is the audience for 8K content? It just feels like something like, whoa, that's powerful, 8K. It's a good I can't stat. do it. I can't do it though. Do you think that more so though, this is about like future proofing? You know, like yeah. they're obviously going to want to stay way ahead of every yeah. other console. This, yeah, this is their their thing, you know? Yeah, that's why I say for when if, if we're talking 2024, it's like, okay, yeah, we're getting then by that point you're getting, you know, five ish years in. Yeah. I could see there being a good reason for that. I still think, you know, now though, the slim would be a smarter play. Right. right. Now, but again, we're we're far enough away where I I I wouldn't say that this is nuts. And I mean, they, they have a good, you know, first-hand case of the PS4 Pro um, being a way to sustain the PS4, and the PS4 went on to sell a bajillion units. So they do, they do know what they're, 
they're doing with this. And again, they have a good roadmap for a, a pro version, even though I'm, I'm probably not the market for it. Yeah, I'm definitely not the person that is always seeking the most powerful hardware, obviously. Um, but I think from a, like a business perspective, this seems to be like, they're, they're going to be very focused on this one element you know, of what sets them apart, mm -hmm. which is power, which is graphics, all that stuff. So this makes sense for them. Um, yeah, I think the date of it being, you know, late next year also makes more sense too. Um, because then again, there, there's going to be new stuff on the market, I think, from Xbox and from Nintendo. So they'll have a, a way to compete with that, you know, and have a, have a conversation point. Like, well, if you're looking for power and you're looking for this, then we have this, this new console. Yeah. So. And again, this is still very much a rumor, so take it with a grain of salt. Yeah. Uh, next, we have an update on that story <laughs> of the Dolphin emulator oh, going to Steam. So they released um, a very long update, the Dolphin team did, about what actually happened and, and what's happening next. So when the story first broke, something that was apparently misreported that, that people were saying was that... Um, they got like a copyright there was a, strike? There was a, a DMCA yeah. uh, sent from, uh, I believe, Nintendo to Valve to get them to prevent um, putting putting the, the software up on Steam. And they clarified that that's not what happened at all. And what happened was that Valve contacted Nintendo and got their feelings on it. And of course, Nintendo said, no way. <laughs> and Valve kind of went back to the Dolphin team and said, well, if you want to move forward with this, you need to talk to Nintendo and get them to sign off on it right. um, before we can take any steps further there, which, yeah, I, Nintendo doesn't have a need to DMCA Valve. They can just make a phone call. Exactly. Yeah, it doesn't need to be, it doesn't even need to go to those, you know, those that, that place. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And I think Valve obviously values Nintendo's their relationship with Nintendo, so it makes sense that they went to Nintendo to ask for their permission or just let them know um, before doing this. So that was responsible business relationship um, from Steam, I guess. Yeah. So basically, the, the the takeaway from this long update is that they're no longer pursuing releasing right. Dolphin on the Steam because they've kind of been set up in this impossible situation. Yeah. And they do acknowledge, um, and this is very true, that uh, you know there are there are guidelines for getting something on Steam, but ultimately it's Valve Store, so they'll do what they want. And exactly. if they want to make up more rules for something to need to get on or for something to not be on, they can do that. And it and you know it probably sucks for the people who have been making this thing, but I know. it is what it is, and those are kind of the facts. I do wonder, like before they started making this thing, did they think about you know, these kinds of challenges that would likely arise when they are ready to release it? Like, did someone give them some advice? Like, hey, before going down this long path of doing this, maybe you should, like, check on this kind of stuff? Well, I mean, we've, we've said this a million times, but I, I really do wonder that myself when any time there's, you know, whether it's a fan game or something like this or something that's getting into Nintendo's business. Yeah. Like, and you kind of know how, you kind of know what poking the bear. You should, you should to. know. Or hopefully somebody around you can tell you. Because it happens every you. time. Every time. And it's all public. It's very public. But there does seem to be some amount of surprise. I was like, oh, I can't believe that Nintendo yeah. contacted me. I just feel bad because it, it, obviously a lot of work went into this. Yeah. And they, they seem to be like really excited about it. And it's it's unfortunate that they're not able to release it. That's just kind of like right. it's, it's but disappointing But I'm, I'm certainly them. not surprised at all. And I'm not surprised. I'm just saying like I, I wish someone would have given them a heads up or someone would have told like you know, they, they would have realized so that they wouldn't have wasted all this effort, which is unfortunate. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, I feel bad. It's too bad. Uh, and then they go on to explain about, the, you know, they have this kind of unique aspect of their code where that, that I think is what it's like, yeah. Nintendo truly takes issue with, with, with honestly, is, right. is too technical for me to totally understand. Yeah. So the whole thing about, like, what is public, you know, what when code becomes, like, public or whatever, it's kind of like the... Um, when things become like public domain, I guess. I don't understand yeah. it as much because I'm not um, in that space, but yeah, it sounds like this code base has like already been freely shared with everybody, so they yeah. thought that maybe they were okay. But. You know, so Dolphin has been around for a really long time at this point, and again, I think the people who want to use it are gonna find it, 
and I imagine there will probably be some workaround to yeah, do that's true. the thing they were originally going to do. Yeah, so, it just um, won't be easily as easy to access, accessible as it would right, be if right. it was on Steam. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well. Uh, all right, last news story. There's a lot happening at Comic-Con yes. last week and into the weekend. There's one thing I want to talk about here. So there was a big panel about Spider-Man 2 where they released a lot of new stuff. So they had a new story trailer really showing off Venom. Mm -hmm. and I don't know about you. I thought this trailer was much better than the gameplay reveal they so had a couple months ago. Like, I guess oh. they're saving it for a big beat like Comic-Con, which makes sense too. I was like, wow, this trailer is like better than like most Spider-Man movies. I know. I was like, wow, this is great. <laughs> it's incredible. Yeah. It's truly like, it was so I got me. I'm so hyped for this game. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, like Venom is like a really cool, cool trailer. And, and I remember cool when the Spider-Man yeah. 3 movie was coming out. I was like, oh yes, we're finally going to get Venom, but yeah. that movie didn't really Did do it. Did disappoint a little didn't bit? Didn't do it for me to, okay. so to kind of see them like take another shot at it with this is really, it's really exciting. Cool. Yeah. Um, so that looks great. They revealed that. They did also announce this new hardware bundle mm -hmm. that they're doing. So it includes a branded uh, PS5 system and a branded controller. Something that was really interesting was they're also just selling those console covers individually. So, you know, on a PS5, you can just take those things off. Yeah. That part I really like because I don't really want another PS5. But this is a pretty cool looking yeah. um, uh, cover. So if you could just do like a little, you know, wardrobe change for your existing PS5, like just for a little bit, that's kind of neat. Yeah, it's a great idea. Great I, mean, idea. I, I don't do custom hardware because yeah. it's such a big investment. For like yes, totally. you get caught up in the moment of this one game, but then yeah. eventually there's another game, and yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, to just be able to do this to like kind of fit the mood or, or like hype yourself yeah, up is, is really cool. I'm sure they did some math about like yeah, there's people like Kit who are just never gonna buy another <laughs> system just for this. Just for Kit, we're gonna make a so char charge him fifty dollars for this piece of plastic. Uh, get get the juice out of him one way or another. This controller is pretty cool looking too, actually. I really do like the controller. This well, we don't have it in this picture here, but so the system is red on one side, but on the underneath, it's just the white like. From the, from like the symbiote suit yeah, spider yeah, yeah. on the bottom, right, right, right. So it's it, it, it's probably look great if you have it standing vertical. But yeah, this looks right. really nice. Like um, I feel like we haven't had a ton of custom PS Five yeah, hardware I guess yet. Because so. their supply stuff was so yeah, backed up, so now I think they're better now, so they can do some of these more fun. Yeah fun marketing things. So this is out September 1st, which is, you know, more than a month before the game comes out. Um, and they did not announce a price I thought was curious. Mm, I wonder. Um, the way they worded the PlayStation blog, it was very like a global message. It was oh, like, okay. you know, if you're in these countries, you can get it here. In this country, look, you know, check this retailer. So maybe they were just trying to avoid that. But I mean, they have Gamescom coming up really soon. So maybe they'll do it there. Uh, I mean, if it's out September 1st. It's a system with a game included. Like, it seems like you should get that info out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, that's the news. Let's get into our questions from our Patreon community. Every week, every question we go through is from our Patreon subscribers. First question is from Brooke Obscura. You mentioned that Nintendo has a store inside of its headquarters in Redmond, Washington that is only accessible to employees of the company. Do you have any idea why? Is it used as a test market before launching products that may eventually be sold to the public? Are there strict rules about how much merchandise employees can buy? Can you gift any of these purchases to friends or family? Did anyone ever get caught selling these items online? And if so, what were the consequences? Um, so part, multi-part question here. Mm -hmm. So why, why does Nintendo have an employee only store? Well, that, those, that, the, uh, headquarters in Washington is very private. Right. They don't let anybody into that building. You can't even get past the lobby. Um, there are so many things in that building that is really cool, but they always, they, they basically in front of the store, they have this like museum. That no one can never see because they cover I never, it up. I literally never saw it. Yeah. Employees never got to see it. They cover it all up so you can't see it. You can't take any photos. You can't do anything. So they're just like on a jag of 
Everything needs to be... Go away. Yeah, we don't like you. Go away. <laughs> Everything needs to be like as private as possible for no good reason why. But I, I think they just, they also don't want visitors in that office, like at all. Right. So it's in terms of like why the store exists then, it, like it is just sort of an employee perk kind of thing. I think yeah. they realize like, exactly. yeah, we have a lot of, you know, passionate fans here. Um, so this is a good reason, um, you know, good way for them to get their products and stay in the know on that. But yeah, like, so, you know, we're in the area of Apple. If you go to Apple headquarters, they do have a big Apple store mm -hmm. that is basically plugged into that. You don't yeah. have to go in the office to get there, but right. it is a nice Apple store. This is not that. No, it's in, it's like past the lobby. Right. In the, into the, more so the heart of the office. Right. And an, an employee could bring a guest in with them though. They can. If they wanted to shop the store. Right, right, yeah. right. Uh, is it a test market? No. Absolutely not. Everything in there is available other places. Right. You probably won't find the same lineup. And this was the place to go to get Amiibo when Amiibo were super yeah. hard to find. Yeah, Amiibo were, they were had easy to find there. They had them all. Or like limited edition controllers. You can get that there. Right. Um, Finally, what, so when we did the shopping spree video, we did, as is normal in this video production, color correction. <laughs> and people saw a set of Joy-Con that were in the background. They're like, oh, that's an employee only color, color of Joy-Con, which not absolutely true. was not, not. but that became a whole like yeah. weekend media cycle of like, yeah. oh, Nintendo just revealed, Nintendo just slipped up and revealed its employee only Joy-Con. No, the, no, why would they didn't. make Joy-Con for like 400 people? Yeah. Absolutely not. They it would, would be, never do that. They would never, they don't yeah. care about the employees that much. <laughs> um, Strict rules though. Yes. We wouldn't pass that up. Definitely there's some strict rules. I mean, there are, there were limited edition stuff that you can only, like, one one per person. There was those rules. Well, so you could, most yeah. games, you could get it a little bit early. That's true. As an employee, which was nice. Yeah. For super, like, so like a Smash Brothers or something, like, they were getting wise to the risk, and they would sell that to you basically. Like, day. Day of. Day of. Or, like, launch, launch day. Right. Like, um, they, they were, they started to get savvy of, like, if somebody posted this online, like how big of a headache yeah, would it be? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, it wasn't a super big group of people, but it still opens you up to a certain level of risk. Right, right. Um, as far as gifting, yeah, you can absolutely gift it. Yeah, you get 30% um, off. Um, you get an employee discount. Was that how much it was? Yeah. It was very oh. insignificant. I mean, it depends what you're buying. 30% off of a piece of hardware is... That's true. That's pretty significant. That's true. We didn't have to pay taxes, which was nice. I don't think it's 30% off. It is. It is. I swear to you. Of is. hardware? Yeah, yeah. So if you're buying a Switch, it's like $75 off? I think so. I'm pretty sure you get you get a 30% discount. <laughs> Fact check that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. <laughs> All right. I, I, I mean, at least I did. So I don't know about your purchases, but I was getting 30% I'm going to stick to stealing from the grocery store. Okay, then maybe that's why discounts. you don't have... The five-finger variety. You're lacking yeah. for money here. You're, like in a, <laughs> you're in the streets or something, stealing asparagus. There money. was, though, a big sticker that they would slap on. It was not for resale. Resale, yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, there was somebody that did not resale some, resell something from the store, but they, res, they were reselling, like, department samples. Oh, really? Do you not know about this? I actually thought it was the opposite, where they were buying stuff from the store and then and no. then marking it back up. They, they were on the retail team. The retail I, do, I do know I do know this person in this story, yes. About? Yeah. And they were selling um, department samples. But the serial numbers are on the back, so you're an idiot for doing oh. that. And, of course, that person was immediately fired because that's absolutely terrible. How did they find out? They were like, what's going on with these samples? They couldn't find oh, the they samples. Were, they were just vanishing? tracking the um, serial numbers. Because uh, they had a, like a, a PI sheet yeah. with all the serial numbers. And they mm. were like, why is this on eBay? <laughs> 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 so dumb. If you're going to commit a crime like stealing oh, no. asparagus or reselling stuff, be a little bit smarter, I'm just saying. I didn't do it. I told you I not to. I didn't go through with it. I told you not to. I talked you out of it. <laughs> oh, boy. But yes, that there are consequences, <laughs> which, me, which includes you getting fired. Right. <laughs> Gartooth is next. What are your thoughts on NCL's promotional campaign around the Famicom's 40th anniversary? You've mentioned in the past how Nintendo doesn't really do anniversaries that much. Does anything stand out for why this particular one is of importance to them? So they have a custom site mm -hmm. built out for this. Yep. They have custom social channels for this. Have you checked these out? I have looked at it briefly. It is very um, Nintendo of Japan focused, obviously. 
Right. Um, so I've seen some people saying like, "Oh, is there going to be an announce? Are they like, are they going to bring back like the Famicom Mini or something?" And I think, I think not. No. Because this is not a global product. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. It's very uh, regional. Yeah. 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 So it is nice to see them celebrating this. Obviously, this is where it all began mm -hmm. um, for them. So I, I think that's probably I think that's you know their their thinking yeah. is yeah this is important enough that we should acknowledge. Um, it does make me wonder if in a couple of years you know we'll see an we'll, NES and OA yeah. you know have something similar. I, I hope so. Yeah, maybe they can point to this as an example. Like you guys did it, let us do it, kind of thing. You know. Yeah, and obviously you can't just put. The, the the NES story is different from the Famicom stories. You'd need to do a, a good amount of work to update that. Right, right. Um, but it's nice. And, and again, not every anniversary has to have some big product reveal mm -hmm. as part of it. It can just be a you know a feel good, um, you know, remembering your history yeah. kind of. And I think this piece. is a significant year as well. It's like uh, 40, 40th anniversary is pretty significant. It's yeah. Like, you know. Some some kind of odd number, I guess. Um, so from like a recognition perspective, I think it is like pretty significant. So. Yeah, yeah. Internet Mike has the next question. Can you please tell us more about Nintendo's fantastic Yule Log video? It's one of my favorite game related videos and it was amazing to learn that it was a passion project of yours, Kit, yes. So Sights and Sounds, mm -hmm. we have talked about that a little bit. That yeah. was a video project. Um, that was very much um, a pet project of mine and one other uh, employee on our team. We sort of were kind of a two person team on that. And we ended up making either four or five of these. Yeah, there was like, the first one was like the Breath of the Wild one. There was, yeah, the Zelda in the Woods, one. Mario Maker on the beach, yep. at the beach house. The beach house, there this was one was great. Smash Brothers on the train. Oh, that's right, the train. That one didn't turn out so well, I'll be honest. Oh, um, the sounds were not great. And then um, this, this one. one. Was there any one after that? And I think I this may think have this, been the last, This yeah. was the last one, because right. it didn't really and, do that well. And around that time, like, always from the beginning, people were asking questions of like, well, why do we need to do this? Like, how is this, how is this improving our sales? And it's mm -hmm. like, oh, well, we, we literally cannot prove that anything we do in marketing results in, in a single sale without a lot of work. Right. So that's an interesting angle to take on it. And again, like there's value in these sorts of, um, you know, different content pieces that, you know, give people different perspectives on the hardware or show it being used in different ways. That was mm -hmm. really the whole point of the marketing that we were doing. For this one in particular, you were really like trying to capture like a seasonal moment. And like it was, that, yeah. yeah, it was around the holidays. Like you want to capture those good feelings of relaxing in front of a fire and playing games on your Switch. And um, not a lot of marketing that we were doing was like really doing any, anything like that. Yeah, and at this point, um, we knew that this was going to be the last in the series. Like, it was clear that this had sort of run its course. So we thought, like, well, let's just go kind of whole hog on this. And the, the previous videos were maybe, like, three or four minutes a piece. But in this one, it's like, we're going true long forms. This is, like, a half hour long yeah. of this person um, sitting by the Yule log. And, and I think they were playing Link's Awakening and, and Mario Odyssey. And uh, yeah, it is fun to, I, I do occasionally check on this like around the holidays and it's like, yeah, there's like a little pickup in, in, in views. views. So yeah. I, it, it is nice that, that this did find a bit of, of an audience. And yeah, we were trying to tap into that Yule Log trend and there was like a real life thing that people do yeah, around the holidays. But exactly. this is an example of the, you know, the, the sorts of project that is like z literally a zero risk project that was like a real headache to even get mm -hmm. off the floor. And it's amazing to see that like after you left and you, you weren't there to fight for these anymore, none of anything like this has not existed since then. No, it's strictly game it's trailers tri it's and commercials. basically game trailers on the YouTube and, channel. and commercials right yeah. now. Like there's literally nothing else there. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, there you go. Prada Jake asks, for Mario Kart 9, do you think they should continue crossing over with the real world? For example, the Mario Kart Tour course is based on real world cities and the collaboration with Mercedes-Benz. <laughs> or should the real world be kept out of the Mushroom Kingdom? Also, any fun story time about how that Mercedes-Benz partnership came to be? I do like the, um, the city courses that they've brought to the Mario Kart 8 DLC. Mm -hmm. I don't mind that type of real world integration into Mario Kart. Like, 
you know, like some of those tracks, like the Singapore one and the um, the one that we just did in Athens, I believe, they were really well done and mm-hmm. really fun and um, a fun way to, you know, sort of highlight what is unique about some of these really famous cities. I don't like as much the type of real world collaboration like the Mercedes Benz. That just felt very out of place. That was strange. And just didn't fit with like the overall like, you know, vibe of Mario Kart is like all of a sudden you have like this SUV that's just like in this game. It just felt very sort of shoehorned in, I guess. Um, so I don't, I don't, I hope they don't do more of that, but I definitely like some of the, the city tracks from uh, in, the, in the Mario Kart 8 DLC. Yeah, I was working on Mario Kart 8 at the time, and I remember my main memory of the Mercedes thing was me just asking a million times, like, this is real? Is this for? Is this a joke? <laughs> and then they. Sh- driven by Japan too. And then they showed me the commercial with the big like strongman with the Mario costume. Yes. I was like, oh, okay. Oh, okay, I guess we're really going there. <laughs> this is real and it's completely nuts. Yeah, it's yeah. nutty. Yeah. Um, I disagree with you on the real world courses. Oh, do you not like those? Well, I mean, they are the main hook for tour, so that they are like that game's angle in terms of you know a course content stamp and also some of the, the retro courses that they bring back. Um, I don't know. I, th- I think there's just so much rich material and possibilities within the world of Mario and now all these other characters that they're bringing in. Sure. Um, it just feels like slightly lazy to me, even though, oh. even though those courses are well done and they're fun. Oh. And I understand, I, I'm fine with them being in this where they're just trying to like add more courses. It's like, all right, well, we have this one that people who don't play mobile might not have tried, but for an entirely new game, I would be disappointed if they kept doing that. I, I want it to be as Mario'd up as, as, it, as it can be. They should do a course where you go around the Kyoto office, except you get really lost because it's just all white walls <laughs> and white doors for like the entire like six laps. Yeah. <laughs> Less toilet stuff in the in these oh, courses, the toilets. Please. That's weird, dirty, dirty toilet drains Going and stuff. Going to the no, dirty bathtub you. where the, yeah. the gross like slime is. <laughs> yeah, and again, if, you know, I, I imagine they will have more of these like non Mario characters. It's like, get take advantage of that. Where's fully. the um, take full advantage of that Super Mario movie Mario Kart Nine course? Oh, we'll never get That'd that. Be cool. We'll never get that. Oh no! Yeah. Drive through like Brooklyn. And then go into a pipe and go into the mushroom kingdom oh. and then come back oh, out from Brooklyn. Wouldn't that be cool? Well, that could, that could I'm be really cool. I'm just giving that's, away my great ideas. That's a neat idea, actually. Right? Uh, Smosh Adrian is next. Hi, Kit and Krista. I've recently lost motivation to play video games due to stress and other mental health related issues. Has this ever happened to you? If so, what do you do to regain the motivation? Oh, no. I hope you're doing okay. Um, yeah, I, I guess there's. Sometimes, like even like a little bit right now, where there's so many games to play that I think we're just overwhelmed. And then there's other times too um, where you're so exhausted from living a life, you know, and just so just like over it that you you know you can't even like have the strength to like pick up a controller, you know, and play anything. Um, so I kind of I, I kind of know where you're you're coming from and how you feel maybe. Um, I think to regain motivation in in the times where I just feel overwhelming exhaustion is I have watched other people play video games <laughs> and that helps to regain some of my motivation. Like watching other people play um, and their excitement or their reactions um, helps me like remember or, or reminds me like what was fun about it in the first place and why this is a, a good thing to help me maybe manage some of that stress and have a, an escape and have a release um, of that. So that's that's one thing that I do. And then, you know, I eventually always kind of like get out of that rut and go back to it, so. I'm a big believer in uh, listen to your body. So if, if your body and your mind is saying, I don't want to play a video game, then don't play a video game. Exactly. And um, I imagine after some amount of time, um, you know, you probably be like, hey, that sounds like a fun thing to do again. Mm-hmm. Let's go back and do that. Like yeah. I. I, I certainly don't want to be in a place where it's like, oh, well, I don't want to do it, but I, I, that's, I have to. That's what I do, so yeah. I'm going to keep doing that. It's like, no, just take take yeah. a break. That's, there are also that's some, normal and healthy. Yeah, there are also some games that are like a lot sort of easier entries, like more like visual novel style games or things like oh, that. Oh, yeah. Play something light. Play a little Door Down. That game yeah. is not even like really considered a, you know, you're not like 
finger gymnasticing your way through this game. You're just yeah. enjoying beautiful scenery and it's very relaxing and maybe that will help a little bit yeah, as well. Yeah. I do hope you feel better. Super Pistachios next. Were the Zelda CDI games ever talked about internally <laughs> or were they just shunned completely? I don't think a lot of people even knew about these. I was to just going to say, be very honest, people don't really recognize or knew about the existence of these. Nintendo, again, we we talk about this a little bit too. Like even die-hard Nintendo fans, when we were working at Nintendo, because there were so many new games coming out all the time, it was a very future-looking company where you just like focus on the next thing, you know. So to kind of think about obscure games from the past, it wasn't like a huge thing. Yeah, and you know, there were a lot of knowledgeable people at Nintendo about games and, and history, but I think this is such a strange left turn. Yeah. That like, I, I don't hold it against anybody who doesn't know about these because it's so out of character and out of the ordinary um, for these games to even exist. Yeah. So no, there, there frankly was not a lot of, I mean, occasionally you would have a joke with somebody who was like, you know, as, you know, just living that life as, yeah. as, as we were, but um, it was honestly a bit few and far between. Yeah, and it's, it's interesting because there, there are some instances where, you know, we look at past launches and past games to inform marketing decisions or business decisions for upcoming games, but Zelda CDI was never one that we looked to. <laughs> for any sort of inspiration. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. It's the opposite. It was definitely the opposite. Uh, VGM Life's next. Hi, Kit and Krista. If the Switch had been another Wii U-level failure, where do you think the company mm. would be now? Would we have the Switch successor already? Would they be making mobile games? Would there be a dedicated handheld 3DS successor? Would they be a Sony third party? Would they be making pachinko games? Please describe this horrible alternate reality for us. Yikes. Yeah, I think that would have been pretty rough if there was two, you know, sort of failures at the Wii U level, you know, back to back. That would have probably spelled some real doom and gloom um, for the company and, and made it pretty impossible to, for them to maybe like pull out of a rut that deep. Um, yeah, because one of the in, in the Wii U days, one of the refrains was like, well, the company's got a lot of money in the bank. But if you looked at the financials, that, that money started to dwindle. Like pretty fast. Um, so if they had to go through that a whole other cycle, I could see them starting to get pretty concerned yeah. about the money that they had and no longer had. Right. So I do think there would be some sort of a drastic change. Mm -hmm. um, I think the third party option is pretty, I mean, they would resist all of these. They would resist, <laughs> they would all, resist of all of these. But at some point, like reality has to set in. Yeah, I, I think the third party option or like the, we're just gonna be a, a software maker to yeah. another hardware publisher would be the one they would resist the most though. Um, out of all of these options, that would be the one that just would dagger to the heart them the most because that would just be like such a fail on the on that part. Um, the the idea of like audience expansion, whether it's mobile games, whether it's licensing their stuff out to do other things, I think is probably the most appetizing. Like they, I I, I could see them, you know, getting kind of desperate, but they still have the power of their IP, so they could like do some crazy Hello Kitty level you know, licensing deals where they like basically just sell off the IP to do, to make some, make, make back some of that money. Um, right now, we all know that they're just so stringent with it, you know, like they don't do this kind of stuff. So they might loosen up on that respect just to try to expand their audience and, and try to get back into the blue ocean that they like rather than compete in the one that they're losing in, you know. Quality of life. Wii Vitality Sensor. Bring back the Wii that Vitality would, that would Sensor. Us. That will save us. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, I think they, they might, again, in the throes of despair, just do something completely Zany. off the wall before yeah. going into some of these more, you know, quote, realistic or traditional yeah. options. Like yeah, one yeah. last, last ditch, like... It's going to be cardboard, guys. We're, we're going to crazy our way to the top it's kind of be, idea. It's going to be cardboard. Yeah. Build your own Wii U Switch <laughs> Pro. Excel. <laughs> Our last question is from Wario Tush. Pikmin Yoshi and Luigi's Mansion all have dog companions now. Oh. 
I'm not sure if it would be the target audience, but if they made a new Nintendogs with mascot dogs instead oh. of realistic ones, I'm willing to bet they'd be printing money. What other games should have dog companions? Maybe yes. make Wolf Link a permanent buddy instead of an amiibo bonus. Oh my gosh, I love this idea. They should definitely do this. This is a great idea. But, this is a great idea. But we need to get past Wolf because it's too. It's 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 just a, a wolf. It doesn't need to be but Wolf it's a Link. Friendly wolf. Yeah. It's it's domestic. But I think this is why this hasn't happened. Is they're like, oh, it's it's Link and Link. Oh, we can't do that. Oh, Cancel you just that need idea. to give him like another. I see. Right. Because it's it's, it's also they Link. can't big brain that there's two Links. There's two can't two Links. Just make I a see. dog. <laughs> Not a dog Link. Just uh, just yeah. a separate dog. Yes, yeah, a new dog. A new a new dog. A new dog. <laughs> there are dogs in Tears of the. You want to give it like a Triforce fur patch or little, something? Like, it's like that's great. You know how yeah. Torgo has a little like tramp stamp. Huh? Torgo has a little tramp like a cutie mark. But, um, you can Cutie get, mark? That's what they call him, My Little Pony. And, and, <laughs> and, so they can give, they can give, they can give Wolf Link or dog, doggy, whatever, dog, doggy Link a, a Triforce Cutie Mark. That would be so cutie cute. Mark. You never heard of that before from, from My Little Pony? <laughs> the way you went from tramp stamp to cutie mark. I, I said tramp stamp, and I remember it was a family show, and then I was like, no, we should call it a cutie mark instead. <laughs> wow. Um, but yes, we absolutely should do this. Everybody deserves a doggy companion. Um, I, I can't wait to see. I want to see like what doggy elements are in like Super Mario Wonder and like other. I mean, there's yeah. an elephant. We know that it's not a dog. But um, yeah, I want to see. I, I werewolf, love... Mar werewolf Mario. <laughs> No, it's like howling at the moon. I want to see. I want to see more doggy companions, and I would absolutely love a mascot dogs, Nintendo dogs. That would be so cute and so cool. There's one that I would like. Again, just to mess with people's minds. Uh huh. Star Fox with a dog. You have the the humanoid. Fox, bird, frog, but then you just have a dog. No, this is the same thing that happens with Disney. It's like huh? Goofy is a dog that has a house, a job, and clothes. Pluto, oh, yeah. also a dog, right. but is Mickey's pet. You see, this is the same dilemma. Yeah, that would just make me laugh. <laughs> you know what other dog we should have? What? You know, like the iRobo dogs? They should make like one for Samus. Like a little oh. robot dog. Oh, that's a fun idea. For Samus. Yeah. And maybe it could do like cool. Like robot things, hmm. like turn into a little like tiny morph ball or something like that. What if you give Yoshi a pet? I mean, people, has, people. Yoshi has Yoshi has Poochie. Mm. Oh, wouldn't it be funny? If this that is like, oh, well, I'm, I'm tired of being. I'm not. I'm not Mario's pet. Now I have a little minion. Well, he does. It's Poochie. Where have you been? Poochie I don't really. I don't, I'll be honest. I don't really love Poochie. Poochie is like around here. Oh, right there. We put yeah, Poochie in, in the jail. In jail. I don't love Poochie. But maybe a new okay, one. Okay, back to the Samus though. Yes. Like. Samus turns into a morph ball, and you can play fetch with your robo doggy. All right, I'm out on this. <laughs> How fun! That could be a mini game right there, right there, right there. Oh my That's gosh. all the questions. I put I that at the this. end for a reason. I love this. I'm so in on this right now. So in. Okay, we have to shout out some beautiful, wonderful new superstars and a new one. We have a new one. A new one. Yeah. That's amazing. Okay, here we go. Aaron Hash. Ben Icorn. Maru Mayhem. Eigenverse. Kiss My Flapjack. Mike Chin. Mr. Rogers. Roy Eschke. So witching it up, underscore. Safazon. The Shark Among Men. VGM Life. Link, the hero of wits. Angela Bycroft and her pig Molly. Turbocharge Nerd. Thomas O'Rourke. Kyle LaBeouf. Christopher Lara. Simon. Frederick Ulf Conradson. Andrew Yuhas. And our newest superstar, Jack. Woohoo! All right. Da, 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 da. We got a new photo of Molly last week where really? she was looking oh, I didn't know upon that. I a, seen a beautiful it. verdant field of green. Wow. And there were like cows and Molly, and it was it was fantastic. Oh, it was delightful. Great. Delightful. Um, one Up Club graduation service. Here we go. Aaron Burgundy. Adam and Ansley. Ajan Malari. Ale Alejandro. Alexandra Pratt. Astro Dev. Bad Moon Horizon. Ben GB. Bookum Dano. Brad SF56. Brooke Obscura. Brookie Kazooie. Bruce Dash. Chelly Squirrel. Christopher Lay. Captain Alex. Crimcat. C Roper 17. Daniel Cole. Daniel Phillips. Dachshund. Dolce. Dino Punch. Elite Peach. Elix 780. Aspars 50. Fart Priest 69. Fairbound. Franny and Jess Forever. Fox Deploy. Fred Rossi. Garrett Hullfish. Garth the Wolf. Gartooth. G-Sun 101. Ian Shea. Is Iris Marin. Jay Rando. 
Jabroni Jones, JBJ, Jeffrey Hernandez, Jerry92602, Jesse Hernandez, John Responte, Jonathan Rowe, Jordan Collette, Jordan Hemmerly, Joseph DeHaze, Joshua Clements, Juji Fruit, Jess Cantro, Justin Leminger, Cairo Trigger, Kawa2796, Keith Kwan, Kelp Shake, Kevin Delane, Hilo Kibo, Chris Yu, Christopia Party With Me, Kyle Gamer Barry Rookie, Kyle Kretzer, Kyler Nelson, Linnell Stickman, Lennis Sullivan, Lit. Lum Luminous. Mad Dog 5981. Marky Man 64. Mecha Dragon 101. Megan. Michael Craven. Michael Rios. Mikey. Motomania. Mr. Andy Paul. Mr. Beans and Dip. MSM Poke Gamer. My Tran. Nasir. Nathan Burkhart. Nick E. Ninja 11. Panda Buns. Hangy. Policy Pace. Prime. Nope. Paul Gill Network. Prime Factor. Prince Charmless. Reaver. Rain Tech. Renee Rivers. Ryoth One. RJ Kern. Rob Osborne. Rocks. Ryanetta. Sam Nealon. Sharif Jackson. Shinryu. Slowbro. Shrew. Silly Ferret. SJ Sharky Triple Seven. Spicy Munchkin. Steel Citrone. Tales of Link. Tech Magic. Terror Storm. Thomas Alvarez. Three Rivers. Topher Schmofer. Travis Torline. Tugs Puppy Bear. Tuscoop. Tyler Geis. Fezzes. Video Game Stupid. Viridian. Virtual Bot. Weep Kingdom. Wicked Davy, Will Johnson, Zudaverve, Zelgaroth, Zapati, and Zoroid. <sighs> Some new names. New names. Quite a few new names, actually. Yeah, it's been great. It's been awesome. Don't be left out. Don't be left out and subscribe to us today at patreon.com slash Kit and Krista. Hope you enjoyed the dulcet tones of this piano accompaniment that we had for this episode. You got a little What's bop? the story with that? My mom's a piano teacher, <laughs> in case you didn't know. It's the summertime, so these just these kiddos are out of school and doing doing this piano in the middle of the day. You walked into this as a tiny little boy in a full suit. What is happening? Filming himself <laughs> playing the piano. What is happening? Oh no, the FBI found me for the stock know. of asparagus that I considered. I don't know, but good on this this child for um, playing the piano. Quite an extensive lesson. I think they're just recording this kid playing piano for something. I don't know what. I have a TikTok career, but it wasn't <laughs> vertical video, so I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine. All right. <laughs> Uh, if you are watching this podcast on video on YouTube, you can go ahead and subscribe to our channel. We just passed 60,000 subs, oh, by the way. Thank you very thank much. Thank you so much for everyone that subscribed. Give this episode a thumbs up and also leave us a comment. Or if you happen to be listening on audio, you can also subscribe, give us a five-star rating, and also leave a written review. Don't forget to follow us on socials. We're on... Where are we? Oh, boy. Is it Twitter or <laughs> what, is it X? I don't you, know. What do you call it? I guess I we're on Twitter and or X, uh, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, and, of course, Threads. Still there. Still there. Hasn't been Hanging explored. on by a thread. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. We're going to enjoy this lovely piano music, and we'll see you later. Bye. Bye.